It's the Orioles on Masson on a lovely Sunday afternoon in Cleveland. It's the Orioles and the Indians today, the rubber game in this three-game weekend series. And hi, everyone. I'm Jim Hunter. The Orioles today concluding their seven-game road trip. They have a chance for a series win before heading home for a day off tomorrow. And what the Orioles are in search of is consistency at the plate. It has been a struggle to score runs, and it's affecting the one-loss column. Now, one thing the Orioles can look to is last year when they played a lot of games, two runs or less, and eventually still went on and won the division and won 96 games. Now, last year, the Orioles were 10-40 and 40 in games scoring two runs or less. So far this year, in 2015, already 21 games decided by two runs or less, tied for the third most losses, just one win in those situations. And since May the 1st, 17 of the 21 games they have played, two runs or less. And Jim Palmer, it is frustrating. Uh, most of these hitters have track records. They haven't been there consistently. The pitching has come around. Now the hitting needs to catch up. Well, it does, and it's not going to get any easier today with Carrasco pitching up. Um... You know, Buck Showalter talked about it. He said, listen, uh, one of the writers said, well, you know, the uh, the track uh, the track record, the uh, previous history. Well, then Buck goes, hey, it's really about today. It's about the at-bats you have. It was tough to see yesterday. They did a nice job against Markham uh, uh, on Friday, Matt Weider's first game back. He'll be behind the plate today. But at the end of the day, you talked about those 17 games. They've lost 15 of those games. Mm-hmm. So they better start scoring some runs. Totally different team than last year. So you can, as far as I'm concerned, throw out all those numbers. Yeah, it gives you hope. But Cruz is playing in Seattle. Marquecas is in Atlanta. Uh, you got to get the guys to play better. They have to have better at bats. It won't be easy today. But again, just the quality of the at bats. The Orioles don't hit doubles, they don't steal bases. Pretty much about the home run, so they better hit some. All right, well, how do you change it then if you're the group, the nine going today? You get a win, you get a series win. Well, you're right, and that's only happened one in the last 14 series against the Indians over the last, what, three, four years. So, you know. Get good pitching. Uh, that's the one thing. You know, Bud Norris is going to be doing it on short day rest. You let him pitch well. You hope that you get enough runs. You hope you have a, a couple of quality of bats. And quality of bats, Jim, as you know, get a guy on, move him over. Mm-hmm. Get him into scoring position. The Orioles had one of the best uh, runner in scoring position numbers yesterday. They only had three opportunities. They were 0 for 3. So today it's the rubber game at 3. Birds looking for a series win before heading home to get back in the division. We'll come back and visit with pitching coach Dave Wallace after this. Baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. 
Book now at OCOcean.com. Well, the Orioles starters get one of their own back today as Bud Norris will go to the mound. The starters have had a tough go in large part because of lack of run support. You see the starters record 15 and 24, and those 24 losses are tied with Boston for the most in the American League. And the ERA and run support tell the story, giving up 4.24, getting 4.2 in support. I spoke with pitching coach Dave Wallace about Bud Norris coming off the DL today and about the expectations for Bud going to the mound. What's it going to be? Well, we hope it's close to normal. You know, I don't, I don't know that it's going to be 110 pitches and in eight innings or anything like that. But, you know, the reason he's been out on a few times is to try to get his strength back and try to build up to where, you know, he goes 90 pitches, 100 pitches, five, six, seven innings. So he's got up and down enough. He's thrown enough pitches, uh, although it's not quite the intensity you have in a situation like this. But, you know, we're hoping that Bud is uh, pretty uh, pretty close to what we expect he was early in the year. So, you know, hopefully he's back on tack. Last time out, he threw the ball well. He had good command, which was a big issue. So um, we're looking forward to him, uh, you know, hopefully getting us deep into the ball game. Last season when he won 15 games, his command was very consistent all year, and he has struggled with that this season. Is there any one particular reason for that? I, I wish there was, Jim. You know, I think it started in spring training. Buzz just wasn't quite himself, and he came in and, you know, he was a little bit off, and, and, and sometimes what happens is you start battling that and battling that, and, you know, sometimes you try too hard. So uh, I, I think maybe this break was almost a blessing in disguise. We hope so. Uh, because he kind of got back on track his first couple times out. He was, you know, even in the minor league situation, he was not exactly uh, sharp as we'd like him to be. But the last time or so has, has been real good. So we just hope he's back on track. You know, here we are in June. We're going to need him to step up. So, you know, hopefully, as you said, we can get everything back on track. They're all competitive. You have to be at this level. How do you get them, as you just alluded to, to not try too hard and then as a result maybe get themselves out of their rhythm? Well, I think it's part of the day you talk to them, you know, the day before, the day after, and just say, hey, remember who you are. And sometimes I kind of get with the kid with the guys and say, hey, you know, if you do really well at this level, you're not going to get promoted, you know, because this is the best competition in the world. So be yourself, trust what you have, understand how good and what an elite guy you really are, and just go have fun with it. I realize the pitchers can't control how many runs the team scores, especially in the American League rules, they don't bat. Is it wearing on the staff with how inconsistent the runs have come for the Orioles hitters? I don't think so. I think the guys, to a man, understand that this game is ebbs and flows. You know, and and sometimes when you score eight and nine and ten runs, and we give up six, seven, eight, or eleven, you know, it goes that way. So, you know, it, it's the old cliche, but it's true. We can't worry about that part of the game. We have to do everything we can to minimize what the other team does. You know, and try to give them as few runs as possible, be that two, three, four, five, one, whatever it is. You know, our job is to hold the, the opposition down as best we can. So Dave Wallace hoping that uh, what will happen is Bud Norris will be consistent. Uh, did win 15 games last year. Was able to make a lot of quality pitches. Did struggle. And kind of interesting to me, I mean, you look at uh, Tillman's, his numbers, and you look at Bud Norris, it's all about Toronto. Bud gave up 17 runs in two games against Toronto, and Tillman in three games gave up 19 runs. So otherwise, they've actually pitched well. His last start, which was right about a month ago, was when he was in New York. Didn't, didn't feel well, but was still went out and pitched. So hopefully he's healthy. Hopefully he can throw strikes. Lefties hit him well. There's seven of those in the lineup. But keep him in the game and take your chances against a very tough right-hander in Carlos Carrasco. So with Norris coming back today for Dave Wallace, his rotation is back in track. Here's our BGE home game time temperature, 80 lovely degrees. The humidity going in the right direction, now down to 49%. Winds out of the southwest at 14. BGE home is Baltimore's home team for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. Why would you call anyone else? So a lovely day for baseball. Birds looking for a win. Here's the Orioles lineup brought to you by Southwest. Book your little fare now at southwest.com. Machado, Snyder, and Jones with Matt Wieters in the cleanup spot. Matt has hits in each of his first two games since coming off the DL and good numbers against the Indians in his career. Davis at first and Young and Paredes, who's back in the lineup today. Hardy and Flaherty for the Oaks. Yeah, take a look at uh, Carlos Carrasco. Very much like Danny Salaver, they, they both have uh, power arms. Uh, 
you know, I think middle of more movement from Carrasco, but they have the breaking ball slider. They both have really good change-ups, more of the splitter for Salazar. They both throw very hard, 95-96. They both throw strikes. Carrasco, we talked about the Orioles. Uh, what they do best is hit home runs. He only given up four of them. And uh, he's been very balanced. Uh, tough to run on, keeps you in the games. Uh, not very much like Salazar had Tommy John surgery uh, in 2012. So he's back and he's pretty much what the Orioles want. And obviously Terry Francona and the Indians want is that they're starters and they have been doing that. Give them a chance to win every time out. Uh, the Indians, they have a mission today. They're also going into a day off tomorrow and they'd like to win today to get back to 500. They would be 28 and 28 with a win. They have not been at 500 since the record stood at two and two, four games into the season. The Orioles, however, have other ideas. They want to go into their day off, having ended this road trip with a series win in Cleveland. So Buck Showalter's club will look to win their 26th. And when they get home, they go back in the division with the Red Sox and the Yankees coming to town. There's Manny Machado leading off. And Carrasco, you see, pitches from the stretch, and it's inside 1-0. How about that? I guess he's comfortable. Well, he pitched uh, last year early on. Uh, they would eventually move him, and he would pitch very well. Didn't win a lot of games. He's 8-7 and seven on the year. But they'd move him to the starting role, and he was d dynamic. And uh, I always thought it was kind of interesting. There he gets the high strike, inside strike. And wow. Marvin Hudson. Well, you know, boy, this whole road trip is, with the exception of Greg Gil uh, Gibson on Friday night, has been pretty, pretty big strike zones. Pitchers have taken advantage of it. Manny has five hits on the trip, couple of RBIs, and a good take there. Well, my point about the uh, the the uh, the stretch position, which is what relievers, most relievers, throw out of, is that that's the way you teach kids. You you want them to have a dynamic windup, but at the end of the day, right here, now watch him. He's just going to lift his leg up. He's going to get balanced, and then he's going to go. So, and then he throws him a slider in a fastball count, and. I think paid attention. Manny hit that home run off of Salazar. So there, just lift the leg up, balance. You could see it didn't swing. It kind of actually, the, the knee just goes behind the belt buckle. Pretty good uh, way of getting over your front side and pitching down in the zone. And then this kid's got a good arm. Well, he's not a kid. He's 28, but compared to me, he's a kid. But and he's he, you know he's got the change up and uh, he can get you out a lot of different ways. There's a, what we were talking about yesterday. Three home runs. A couple. A couple home runs last Sunday, and then right there, that, that was the uh, the only runoff of Danny Salazar. So Machado battling here. And he fouls it off the other way to stay alive. Oh, and Chris Tillman went back to the minor leagues to begin the 2012 season. Uh, his windup was dramatically changed, and his is very similar to Carrasco's. He does go more into a wind once he begins to go forward towards the plate but he stands very similar as Carrasco does you, yeah. you eliminate a lot of movement yeah this is a conventional stretch right here uh, Tilly feet are maybe not as close together Manny to deep right field but Brandon Moss has a play and he's got it for the out and one away in the Oriole first. Yeah, take a look uh, at the Indians defense be behind Carrasco uh, Murphy Bourne uh, and Moss Chisholm Hall of Vila's uh, Kipnis and Santana, and then uh, Jan Gomes missed most of April with the knee strain, and he's been back. As it turns out, he's going to catch all three of these games. And Terry Francona has a very balanced lineup, so he can move, mix and match with his defensive players. Travis Snyder getting a start in left field today. Buck Showalter has been mixing and matching the corner outfielders on this trip, and Snyder fouls it back. Well, we gave you that number the first time he came in with his uh, what on base and slugging numbers uh, at a, what a 1100, and Buck is one a firm believer, and it was a good matchup with Markham because he doesn't throw that hard. Travis Snyder likes to hit in this ballpark, so put him in there. He has had only one career at bat against Carrasco, 0 for one, and foul straight back. So Carrasco gets ahead, nothing in two. Yeah, his changeup, to tell you what kind of power arm he has, his changeup, uh, his average changeup's about almost 89 miles per hour. He's got a slider at 88. Curveball, very much like Salazar. Didn't throw it very much yesterday, Salazar, but uh, he can drop it off. That's down in the low 80s. 
And the 0-2 and he fouls it back. Well, Carrasco, he signed out of Venezuela with the Phillies when he was 16 years old back in 2003 and then was traded here to Cleveland as part of that big deal that sent Cliff Lee to the Phillies. That was in July of 2009. So one of those deals that worked out well for the Indians in the future, and as you mentioned, they had to be patient with him as he battled the injury. Well, you go for the arm strength, and he has that. There's the slider. If you look at Michael Brantley, he's not playing today, but last year he was their best hitter. He came in the CC Sabathia right. trade. So they, 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 they had two pitchers, Lee, Cy Young Award winner, Sabathia, Cy Young Award winner. They weren't going to sign here, and they, they dealt them and rebuilt. And he got him. So down on strikes goes Snyder and two away. Oh, there's the slider. It, 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 when a guy's a little bit late on 94, 95, and then you throw this ball, I mean, it reads fastball. You bet, know you got to be quick, and you swing right over it. It's pitching at its best. And expressed that by Express Care, a LifeBridge health partner for locations. Visit whywaitintheer.com. So most consecutive starts, seven or more strikeouts, Carrasco's. Got a streak going of five as teammate Corey Kluber has six. Chris Sale and Clayton Kershaw, <laughs> some big names on that list. Two of them have won Cy Young Awards. So two down in the Oriole first. Here's Adam Jones. One of the few hitters in the lineup that is hot at the moment. Adam has a four-game hitting streak. And he is eight for 16 with two home runs in that streak. Batting average at 309. Deep left field. Will it carry out? Back it goes. It is gone for Adam Jones. Stay hot number 10. And the O's grab a 1-0 lead in the first. Yeah, he's been pretty consistent. Uh, the Orioles needed to win in Houston. They'd lost uh, five in a row, three down there. They bring in Qualls. He hits a, looks like a hanging slider. And then on Friday night, Markham hangs one. He hits it 431 feet. This one didn't go that far because it didn't have time. And it's another hanging breaking ball. So when you're hot, you get pitches to hit. When you're hot, you don't miss them. And when you're hot, you give the Orioles a one nothing lead. So for Adam, it's number nine. He now has 30 RBIs and a big two-out home run for the Orioles to get on the board. Here's Weeters, and it's outside 1-0. Yeah, check out this hanger. It might even been a changeup, but something uh, off speed that stays in the middle of the plate speeds the bat up, and he just doesn't miss it. I mean, that ball was smoked to left field here in Cleveland. And over but low for ball two. Boy, in the old days, you'd look at uh, Bud Norris uh, as a starting staff. You'd be sitting together, and there's your hit speed at 103, and you'd say, there's your run. Go get him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what happened to Obaldo yesterday. They got him a run and a one nothing lead, and that was that. Unfortunately, Ibaldo on a very, you know, windy, it's a totally different day here because it's a hot and humid, or at least tempered and uh, humid. You know, Weeders grounds out, kipped us to Santana, but the Orioles get on the board. Adam Jones with his ninth home run of the year. Bottom of the first coming up, one nothing O's.
Mom taking a photo with her son or trying to. Oh, oh no, no! Mom! I lost my hot dog for a photo! Now Mom's got to go back to the concession stand. Here's the Indian flight up. Kip this with Carlos Santana in the number two spot. He is heating up over the last 10 games. A very patient hitter. Murphy and Moss with Swisher DHing. And Chisenhall Gomes born and Avilas against Bud Norris. And uh, Bud Norris. Well, fastball sliders and cutters, and then the changeup at eight. And as we said, uh, his bad outings, and they were really bad. He pitched opening day in Baltimore, gave up eight runs, and then two starts later up in Toronto, gave up nine runs. So 17 of his runs uh, against the Blue Jays, and the rest of the games pitched when he was hurt. How about that 421 against lefties? And they have seven in their lineup, but certainly capable of getting anybody out. Last year, he really matured as a pitcher. Uh, Dave Wallace and Dom Cheney came on and he was able to make his pitches. He won on the road because he's not a good road pitcher over the course of his career. Did everything you needed to do to win. Played on a good ball club, gave him a chance to win. Yeah, he's a very good athlete and uh, you know, he was upset that they put him on the disabled list when he had the bronchitis, but he wasn't pitching well and he did lose, what, 10, 12 pounds? Yeah. And he uh, needed to regain the strength in his legs. I mean, explain that why the legs are so important to a pitcher. Well, it propels you towards home plate. It allows you to get your arm in the uh, the position you want. Dave Wallace talked about it in your interview. You know, release point. If you lose it, if the pitch is flattened out, can't make the pitches you want like that. See you later. Perfect fastball outside corner. I mean, it, it's not about velocity. All spring long, everything was up. And, uh, and you got Matt Weeders. He's very confident. I still remember in spring, he said, Boy, I'm hoping we get Weeders back. And I said to myself, Well, Caleb Joseph, he had a three point ERA last year. Now you get a better hitter with Matt, but Caleb did a great job catching for the Orioles last night. And nothing against Matt Weeders. But if you have Bud Norris thinks he's more confident with Matt, maybe this is going to be one of those turnaround games. So a strikeout to begin the first. Here's Santana. Oh, and the other thing for Bud, we all know how excited he gets on game day. Uh, what do you I mean? IV of, IV of uh, Red Bull? <laughs> so maybe the Jones home run helped calm him down to make this start. He takes the mound, and he already has a lead. That ball's hit right to Davis on a hop. Chris will take it unassisted, two quick outs. Yeah, take a look at uh, the Oriole defense here in Cleveland. Big Park. Uh, Snyder Jones and a young gentleman uh, back to back games out in right field. Machado Hardy. Gold Glovers, Flaherty, Davis, and then Matt Weeters. This will be his third game, second game uh, uh, behind the plate. There's the four time Gold Glover. He's red hot. Boy, it's all about taking what they give you. And when they hang breaking balls, he's, he's hitting them out of the ballpark. And when they throw him fastballs, he's going the other way. Well, it is a much better day to hit here today than it was yesterday. It is warmer and it is not as breezy. Well, the wind was blowing in, and there were probably a couple of balls. Chris Davis hit hit one that might have gone out. Santana for sure. Mm -hmm. Park Showwater was talking about that today. This is one of the few parks, and it's the lake effect. I, I would think it probably same thing in what in, in in Chicago, either at Wrigley or uh, at Comiskey, or what do they call it now? Uh, U.S. Cellular. Yeah, it's it's Comiskey Park. <laughs> but anyway, the wind affects you know, different cities are. Are a little bit different, and you get the lake effect here, as you said yesterday, Jim. This park farther away from the lake, but yeah, it's about uh, a mile, yeah, I'm told. Yeah, but the other one was right on. The oh lake. Yeah. yeah, but still, when the wind's blowing from the north or off the lake, uh, as it was yesterday, it gets cooler and it affects balls. Today, uh, it's a pretty neutral ballpark with the wind kind of a zephyr out to right center field. Zephyr, yes. Well, you always notice the wind. Oh, Old habit, huh? <laughs> I still run up the ramps to see which way it's blowing, <laughs> even though I'm talking. And foul backs at three and two on David Murphy getting a start in left field today. Michael Brantley's had some back issues, so he gets at least the early part of this game off. Not a bad weapon on the bench when your best hitter is getting a day off. Yeah, what we and it's really not. It's kind of a moot point with nobody on. But the one thing that Bud Norris did so well last year, 173 for a whole year. Runners in scoring position. You got on. You didn't score very often. Big chopper to second right off the plate. Flaherty 
will get it to first and a good start for Bud as he goes three up three down retires the side in order just settling in in Cleveland one nothing Oaks. Third from Essex won $500 for being selected and will win $500 more and already has for every Orioles home run hit today with Adam Jones going deep in the first play baseball buck scratch offs and went up to $50,000 or enter non winning tickets for a chance to be the contestant of the game visit mdlottery.com slash baseball. So John's happy the wind's blowing out. Absolutely. As is Adam Jones. There's Ubaldo who was frustrated yesterday not being able to grip the ball. Well, you know, he's he's a terrific guy and you can get around with him saying, well, so you walk pretty much the whole ballpark and, you know, you can joke around with veterans like that. He just couldn't get a feel for the ball, maybe trying to do a little bit too much against his former team. Well, the one thing he did do, however, is minimize the damage because he had no choice. So many base runners allowed because of the walks. Yeah, he was like a body shop where you, you know, there's a tentative a lot of damage and you can kind of minimize it if you know what you're doing. And I mean, he, but he walks seven. He walks seven. I just making up a lot of stuff. It's <laughs> Sunday. Hey, it's a day game after a day game. Come on. Or a semi day game. Ooh, too tight. Well, Obaldo 12 base runners in five innings, but he allowed only the one run and Carrasco uh, tad erratic early on here. What do you have? Seven walks, six walks, six yeah, hits. Yeah, so he scattered those walks and hits. I, I learned that from Robin Roberts who pitched a 13 hit shutout because he knew when to give up the hits. Davis ahead two and one and he'll take outside. Indian starter. It looked like Salazar. Danny Salazar. Yeah, he was fabulous yesterday. He's Davis only can't reach it. He's run his record to six and one. Well, we talked about giving them a chance. They were Trevor Bowers five and two, Santana six and one, Carrasco seven and four, and then uh, I mean Sal Salazar is, uh, six and one, and then Kluber, the Cy Young Award winner, they don't score when he, he pitches. They don't feel they have to. Close no. pitch. Well, course, Davis got the call. Carrasco very upset. He stomped his foot and then slapped the ball back in his glove. Well, he's probably used to the uh, to the first inning strike zone when it was a little bit wide. Here's our American Standard, who's hot and who's not. Celebrate the season with the American Standard All-Star event. Visit MidAtlanticComfort.com for amazing rebate and financing opportunities. Yeah, so Delman Young, uh, once again in the uh, the lineup because he can play the outfield. He's got eight assists. I still remember in spring training, be walking around, and Lonnie Chisenhall was playing third. He's been struggling, but he, he, Buck Pichoulder would make a point, mainly because Mark Akis is now with the Braves. Is that Delman Young was going to be playing a different role most likely this year, and he has. And he said, yeah, "Don't forget that he was a number one draft choice, and number one overall." Yeah, right, exactly. And he, you know, at one point I think with Tampa Bay, he had 17 assists. 
So he can do a lot of things. And the one thing I didn't know about him, I just seeing him play on occasion, is how uh, he's kind of taken what Adam Jones does, which is he runs balls out. Uh, he's very diligent, uh, you know, about his work habits. He talked to Wayne Kirby, who's the outfield coach. He's worked hard to be the best player he can be. Well, the other thing about Delman is he has gone to the playoffs now the last six consecutive seasons, regardless of which team he was on. Yeah. Well, he gets traded around to, to people that are going to the playoffs because they know he he's a terrific hitter and he, you know, pressure doesn't bother him. Good pitches might, but you're going to have to make your pitches. There you go. Ball bounces in and Davis will take second base on the wild pitch. Well, that's what ended yesterday when the ball, the, the breaking ball from Cody Allen bounced and Chris tried to go down in 2 1 game. I still think, I don't like the result, but I thought it was the right play. But look at his lead. He's got a bouncing secondary lead right now. He's gone. And this time the ball doesn't stay right in front of Jan Gomes. Yesterday it did. He made a nice job of blocking and threw him out to end the game. But runs were not very plentiful yesterday for either side. No. And Delman down on strikes. See, those are, those are such big strikeouts. And you know, the one thing about Carrasco, as we said, uh, he can strike, but this this doesn't allow the Orioles because it's a great pitch. He's already at two strikes. He can't advance the runner. Now, if you hang a slider or you get something up, you know what Delman wanted to do. Right. He wanted to hit the ball the right side, but that pitch didn't allow him to do it. And that's why Carrasco's a pretty tough customer. So here's Jimmy Paredes, who's trying to find that stroke. He had a couple of decent at bats on Friday night. Well, better. He made him. He made Markham, who's not a hard thrower, throw it over. He is one for twelve on the road trip without an RBI. I told him to look at your strike zone like it's an eight by ten piece of paper. Don't swing at your pitch until you get to two strikes. Have an idea up there, which is kind of makes it difficult to pitch. You want to get him out early. This ball's hit towards the gap. It hangs. Michael Bourne's going to get there, and he's got it for the out. So there's not getting the runner over. That might have scored a run yeah. if Davis was on third. Instead, it's a second out, and Davis still at second base. But sometimes pitchers cause you know, getting a runner over. Carrasco's that type of guy. I mean, all you, you talked about the strikeouts. All you have to do is look at six, six, seven, nine, seven, eight. That's his last, what, six, seven starts. So he's a power guy with good command, doesn't walk many people. And he usually stays around. I mean, you look at his uh, going back to last year, his last 16 starts, he's had a decision in every single one of them. Well, one of the reasons is they didn't score any runs for him, you know, especially down the stretch. He went to something like two and three in the month of September, and they scored like eight runs in all his games. Now, a little different story this year as they're getting him 6.3 runs per start. That's how he's got seven wins. J.J. Hardy takes strike. J.J. in the number eight spot today. He is one for seven with four strikeouts on the trip. He is still trying to find that stroke. Since coming back off the DL. He also didn't start any of the four games in Houston because of the side issue. Very important hitter in the lower part of the lineup for the Orioles because of his home run potential. Well, that and the fact last year he hit well with runners in scoring position. Had the back injury early on, so it slowed him down as far as he only hit nine home runs. Typical year is 20 to 30. Good eye there, two and one. But what I saw is that for a guy that I would categorize as a pull hitter, he hit a lot of balls to right field. So if you did give him something, he'd shoot it. Hit some balls between first and second. They play him pretty straight away. They play him to right center in the outfield and straight away in the infield. And you don't do that against too many hitters anymore. Inside ball three. Carrasco has won his last three starts. And he has pitched to a combined ERA in those starts of 1.71. So he comes into this start pitching his best baseball of the season. He's coming off a win last Tuesday in Kansas City where he dominated the Royals. Ground ball towards the middle and there's the shortstop of Vilas. He gloves, he spins, and he got him. So Hardy grounds out. Nice play by Avilas up the middle. And the Orioles strand Davis at second base. one nothing O's heading to the bottom of the second.
Norris breakdown wins versus losses. Oh, there are the wins. And, uh, you can win. see. Yeah. And the losses one and four this year. Well, it really, to me, it's, it, he just hasn't been Bud Norris. And I thought uh, Dave Wallace kind of talked about that, that. They haven't scored as many runs. He hasn't pitched as well. He got trounced by Toronto, who can do that to anybody. They have it to Tillman. And he's been out of sorts, really, even, all, even his games in spring training. It's just one of those years. And free agent year, possibly, unless mm -hmm. the Orioles re-sign him. So maybe trying a little bit too hard. It certainly happens. Tom Hamilton, who does the radio for the Indians, he said, uh, what about your club? I said, well, we do have 10 free agents. He said, 10 free agents. I said, well, we had 11. You have one of them, Brian Webb. He was the, the 11th. He said, well, geez, I know who they're playing for. <laughs> and that's, of course, that's his perception. I don't right. think that's really the right. case. But you still have to be yourself. Right, and but you still not, have to have a good year. And, right. Uh, you know, sometimes some people handle it a little differently or better than others. He looked in because he wanted that pitch. The thing about Brandon Moss, he's hit lefties well for him. He can play the outfield, play a little first, even though Santana plays most of that. And with one swing, he can put runs on the board. Well, he has been around Moss. Drafted by Boston in 2002. Then he was part of a big three-team trade between Boston, Pittsburgh, and the Phillies. Oakland. Now Manny Ramirez, that was the trade. Manny ended up in L.A. when he left the Red Sox, and there's a leadoff walk. So Brandon Moss draws the walk, and the time run is on, leading off here in the second. The Orioles are back home on Tuesday. They'll begin a three-game series against the rival Red Sox. Good seats do remain for each game, but they won't last long. Plus, don't forget about Tuesday, Ollie's Bargain Night, all presented by Ollie's Bargain Outlet. Upper reserve seats are just $10 when purchased in advance. So come on out and help us paint the ballpark orange. For your tickets, Orioles.com or call 888-848-BIRD. Well, we showed you the, what the leadoff batting average was, 387. They got on base yesterday in a lot of walks off of Jimenez. Uh, first five innings, leadoff guy got on and only scored one time. And they're on again. It just sets up holes. It's, it's exactly what you don't want to do. Nick Swisher in the number five spot playing back to back days after not starting on Friday. Check swing and he fouled it off. So there's one he didn't mean the swing and Bud got a break. He got a foul ball. Well, he got two hits yesterday and uh, those. He's two for 12 in June. And one of them drove in a run. Mm -hmm. Both the center field one on the ground one in the air. Neither hit hard but found the hole found the spot. Late on the swing and he fouls it off the other way. Well, we talked about Terry Francona's roster. You have Swisher, who, because of the double knee operations, is probably going to be DHing more than playing a position. You got Murphy in the lineup. We saw him on Friday. Didn't play yesterday, even though he could have. You got Rayburn against Ryan Rayburn, who was having a very good start. He could play against left handers. They have a nice little roster. Then you got Michael Brantley, one of the better players in the league. He's had some back issues, so he's off today. Well, Swisher down on strikes as Bud got ahead and got by him. Good fastball there. Second K for Norris. Well, everybody says that it's Nick Swisher's bat speed is low, and right here you see. I mean, it's just very snail-like. He swings when the ball's almost in the glove. 95, good velocity, got ahead of him. And he's got a four-year deal, so he's going to get paid anyway, but he still has to prove to the Indians that he can have quality at bats with guys with good stuff. And that's what Bud Norris does bring to the table. He's he can pitch in the mid 90s. Breaking ball over but low 1 and 0 on Lonnie Chisenhall. Who is 0 for his last 10 and 4 for his last 26. These are the kind of hitters opposing managers worry most about. With the law of averages, one of these games is going to break out. You hope it's next week when Seattle's here. Right, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm with you on that point. Unless you don't make your pitches, and then they can break up today. But in search of his second win, this is his first start since May the 10th. That was that Sunday day game in New York against the Yankees. You recall he was sent home during the game the day before, back to the team hotel because he felt ill. 
then felt well enough to make the start. And at that point, it was being described as a stomach bug, which then turned into bronchitis, which led to the DL. So May the 10th, just three days shy of exactly a month ago. His one win came against the Red Sox on April the 26th. Yeah, that's that's a terrific pitch right there. 94 on the corner. This is the the Bud Norris of 2014. Could really righties, lefties didn't really matter. And that's probably a pitch that Chisinau has no interest in swinging at it unless the counts two strikes. And because it is, because he was able to get ahead, he probably chased the ball maybe an inch or two off the outside corner. And that's really what pitching is about. Mm -hmm. Throw enough strikes to get him at swing at balls, and you can't do that if you're constantly behind him. So after the leadoff walk back to back K's, John Gomes, the catcher, brings a three game hitting streak into today's game. And he hits it through the shift. That was a bullet. <laughs> Both Hardy and Flaherty were over there, and he hit it right between them. Yeah, the more you see of him, you know he's a good player. Not only is he a good catcher, good receiver, throws well. Yesterday he poked a single in the right and then doubled over the bag. And right here, this okay, there's my best fastball. It's not a bad pitch. High, high, down and away. And he's all over it. You don't get a ball through your stacked defense unless you do hit it sharp. So, Bud, two on and two out. And he'll go to work on Michael Bourne, the number eight hitter. Well, here's your moment of truth. Last year, 173. This year, 405 with runners in scoring position. That will change your record, change the amount of runs you give up. And from a momentum standpoint, you get borne out. Your guys get to come up with a one nothing lead. And if you don't, the Indians will be in, in business. One and zero on Bourne. There's a strike on the corner. I always thought uh, if you if you're you know watching tennis, if you're watching Wimbledon or the French Open, I always thought pitching is very much like playing the big points in a tennis match. The real good players, they hit the best shots at the opportune times, and that's what pitching and hitting's about. Can you relax? Can you make your pitches? Do you know what you want to do? Right there, he got away with the hanger. So now you're ahead again. Make your pitch. Take your chances. And those numbers indicate that Michael Bourne uh, may be struggling a little bit. Now he's 0 for his last 8 overall, 7 for his last 26. And not the hitter he once was when he signed that big deal, the four-year deal to come here to Cleveland. 1-2 pitch. Good right one. down the middle and a called strike three. So Bud gets the out. He strikes out the side around a walk and a hit, and the Indians strand two. So Bud Norris with a good start here, four Ks for the first two innings.
to look forward to Miller time later in today's game. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Bud Norris, four strikeouts through the first two innings. So four of the six outs via the strikeout. He's allowed two base runners on a walk and a hit. And both stranded in the bottom of the second. And Carrasco goes back to work. Against Flash, or Ryan Flair it is, as most people call him. Ryan settling in with the current roster makeup as pretty much the everyday second baseman. In fact, today, unless Steve Pierce played second, Buck really didn't have any other options because Ray Navarro, he was uh, optioned back to AAA today to make room for Bud Norris. The Orioles, keep in mind, have to play a man down. This is game three of the eight-game suspension of Brian Mattis. So they still have five games to go. There's a bouncer to first. Santana backs up on it. And he'll flip to Carrasco, who gets there ahead of Flaherty. And one away here in the Oriole third. You can celebrate summer at Oriole Park. Just pick up the new Birdland Summer Six Pack. Choose any six remaining games for the remainder of the season. And you'll enjoy savings of up to 20%. Off the cost of those single game tickets, you can build the perfect plan for you. Either great rivalries, maybe popular promotions, fireworks nights, whatever you choose. For all the details, just get online, Orioles.com slash six pack or call 888-848-BIRD. Manny Machado flied out to right field leading off the game. Breaking ball for a strike going one. Yeah, he'll probably get a few more breaking balls after uh, the Salazar at bats yesterday. If you're Carlos Carrasco, you, but he skied the first ball to center, hit the next pitch out to right field, both on fastballs. On third base side, it's a beauty. Carrasco over, he turns and throws, he won't get him. Manny Machado with a bunt single, he gets on with one out in the third. Well, with the draft coming up. Uh, it was no big mystery when the Orioles had a chance to, to draft somebody like Manny Machado because of it, the best athlete available at that time a shortstop. This is what they had in mind that he can do a lot of things. He leads the team and win or in a in, in home run or excuse me in stolen bases getting closer to the lead with uh, home runs. Great defensive player. So. If they give you the bunt. Smart baseball. Well, Travis Snyder up with a man on. Royals trying to get what has proven to be elusive add on runs. And a foul back on the breaking ball. Well, what we talked about in the opening is that sometimes quality at bats are moving runners over. Now, as it turned out that, you know, Adam Jones hits the home runs. Uh, and, and then in the first inning or the second inning, Davis walks and then goes on the wild pitch. They go for three. But. If you get guys in or over the scoring position, you have a much better chance of getting them in. And sometimes that's just either pulling a ball to the right side, uh, trying to move the runner over, hitting it the other way. And they're aware that Manny is eight out of nine stealing bases. Pretty comfortable, though, if you're a pitcher on the Indians because Gomes throws that well. Well, Carrasco, they've, they've tried eight attempts against them already. Five have made it, three have been caught. Some of that when Jan Gomes was on the DL, however. A close play at first. Manny just got the hand back in. Jim Joyce back with his crew today. He did not work in the first two games in this series. Travis Snyder, one out, one on. With the way the roster is currently made up, and it'll be a short bench, well, at least for today. Sometimes when you go home for a day off to be in a homestand, rosters may change as well. But what Buck is looking for is for somebody to really get hot and just take over that left field job. And so far, it really hasn't happened. Delman Young has been getting more starts Day in and day out in right field. Oh, a tough hop by Chisenhall, and everybody's going to be safe. Just as he went to glove the turn to throw to second base, he got a bad hop and he botched it. 
Yeah, and uh, everybody talking about yeah, not hitting, but he's played well defensively. I think he made 18 errors last year, much better. And but the difference between shortstop and third sometimes the hot corner, because uh, you don't get to pick your hop. So he's playing in, and there's the hop you talked about. And I don't know how they score that, but it, either way, uh, the Orioles get runners at first and second, whether it's a hit or an error, and they, they score it as an error. So E5 is fourth on the year. Yeah, it's probably one of those plays half step back, get the force. You're not going to turn two. May have hit the lip of the grass. Yeah, that's another factor. That's why a lot of times your 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 positioning at third base, you want to you want to get in that the lip doesn't come into play. So Adam Jones, the O's hottest hitter, with a chance with two men on. Carrasco in a jam here in the third. I fly ball to center field back on it is born still going back has a play and backing up against the wall. He makes the catch Machado will tag and go to third Snyder stays at first Adam just missed another one Yeah, you got to hit it pretty well to get it out of here and, uh, and yesterday really well because of the wind today uh, the wind much more benign actually again just kind of Drifting that way and which is what Bourne's going to do because the ball's up just make sure I can see it early on It was pretty sunny now. It's kind of just you know, a little bit overcast But yeah, just missed it and turned the lights on Their weather heading this way It's here <laughs> <laughs> It arrived <laughs> So born with the sunglasses on still needed help in a tough glare today now Matt Wieters now first and third and two down. And a swing and a miss on one. Matt has a base hit in each of his first two games since coming off the DL on Friday night. Three for seven. Already has one multi hit game and one multi RBI game. And he caught Friday DH yesterday catching today. And probably will catch on Tuesday with a day off tomorrow for the team. Foul tip. Yeah, and good movement. Two. Good velocity, good movement. So kind of a Bud Norris fastball. Carrasco is averaging 10.4 strikeouts per nine while walking just two per nine innings. That is a very good ratio, five to one. And he's ahead of Weeders, nothing in two. Bouncer right back to Carrasco. He's got it. And he'll get it to first and Chisinau clapping at third base. The error did not hurt the Indians. Mid third in Cleveland. The Orioles with a 1 nothing lead.
Dave Wallace there watching every move of Bud Norris as the Orioles have a 1-0 lead here on that Adam Jones first inning home run. Birds have had men on in each of their three at-bats, but they have stranded three. Bud going back to work. He has four strikeouts for the first two innings. His season high is seven strikeouts in his start April 15th against the Yankees. Yeah, 57 pitches in that uh, rehab start for Triple-A Norfolk against, uh, what, the Atlanta team? Yeah, is Gwinnett. It Gwinnett, or is it Gwinnett? Or do we, you know, it's Norfolk or Norfolk? Norfolk. 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 But not. Is it tomato or tomato? It's tomato. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, those triple-A. Those triple-A Braves. Yes. Mike Avila is the number nine batter. Comes in batting at 270. And popped them up. Left side of the infield, Manny and Hardy. And it's going to be Hardy. There you go. The veteran called, and he got it. And one away. Well, be sure to text Masson's word of the day, which today is steak, to 29292 for your chance to win a meet and greet with Chris Davis. That's steak to 29292 for your chance to win courtesy of Outback Steakhouse. Don't forget your grads and dads. You get a $10 bonus with a $50 Outback gift card purchase. How about a blooming, blooming onion? Ever have a blooming onion? I, I have. Yeah. It's hard not to have one if you go to Outback. I, I Unless you don't order. Thanks for <laughs> I, I, I kind of thought the word of the day was in honor of our dinner last oh, yeah. night. Yeah, the Westin Hotel here in that Cleveland. That was a nice. really nice restaurant right in it. All you got to do is walk down the hall. And a nice steak. What is it? Uh, from farm to table. That's yeah, the it's motto. The, the healthy. You, you kind of sneered when you said that. <laughs> that healthy stuff. <laughs> Unless it's uh, Italian food, the steak is the favorite. But Italian food will always win. Kipnis struck out his first at bat, one of the four. And that's amazing because he, he came in a 398 hitter here in Cleveland. Four of his five home runs. Yesterday, uh, well, got on base, what, every time? Two for five in this series with four base on balls. Now, Kipnis there, you saw him leaning towards the other box. It looked like he expected to be called out on strikes, and he wasn't. He was about to walk away. Close pitch, and went his way. And he got him anyway on the next pitch. So Bud picks up his fifth strikeout very sharp early on here. Yeah, so that 421 lefties against Norris, not, not a factor yet. It's not a really good breaking ball, but the, Kipnis is seeing the ball so well. We saw him get a, a, an RBI base hit off of uh, Chris Tillman. He thought that breaking ball was going to come down into the zone. And sometimes you get away with hangers, and that's what that was, because they anticipate the break and it doesn't happen. The two outs, Carlos Santana bounced out to Chris Davis's first at bat. Yeah, he got the big hit yesterday. Uh, the walk by Brad Brock, and then uh, he had to actually put a great swing on an inside fastball and hit a double right down the right field line. Trying to bunt against the shift, but he fouls it back. But on the year, a rough start, obviously, when you're 1-4 and a 9.88 ERA, but the one number that really jumps out is how many base runners he's allowing. 17 and a half base runners for every nine innings he's worked. It is tough to win when there are that many men on. He just... And Dave Wallace touched on it in the interview that he just was out of sync in the spring. I saw him pitch in Jupiter, gave up a three run home run. I just went up there to see the game that day because the Orioles are across the state. Then the next start we did, three run home run on a ball up, just was not the Bud Norris we saw. Hard hit ball right into the shift. There's Flaherty in shallow right field. And he'll get it to first to get Santana. And Norris has his second three up, three down inning. We are through three in Cleveland. Bud and the O's have a one nothing lead.
Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by Royal Farms. Royal Farms' world-famous chicken and western fries made fresh, never frozen. Real fresh, real fast. Royal Farms. Hey, cows in town. Outdoor Cafe. A lot of Oriole fans in Cleveland for this game. Uh, Jim and I met a, a couple from Pittsburgh last night, and they said they, they love to drive over here two hours as opposed to four-plus to get to Baltimore. So whenever the Orioles are here, they take advantage of it. There are a lot of Orioles fans in the city for this weekend series. Swing and a miss by Chris Davis, 0-1 as we begin the fourth. And as we uh, mentioned, it, it is a beautiful ballpark. It is. Great place to watch a game. Ooh, real good pitch on the inside corner, nothing in two. Yeah, he got it one pitch right on the outside corner, and then uh, Carrasco moves it up and in, which is the really the location of uh, of choice by pitchers if they can get it there, especially the hard throwers. Looks like they're going away this time. Which is pitching against your defense. Chris well, it's a, a, a known you know, I, hitter. I, I always thought about that, and uh, of course the. The charts say that regardless of where you throw it, not that it works that way all the time. There's fouling off a changeup, a 90 mile per hour changeup, is that the charts convince people that Chris Davis, the arc of the bat, because he has a pronounced upper cut swing, which is, I mean, he misses almost 37% of the balls he swings at. So you know the bat is not in the zone a lot, so it's hard to hit ground balls to the other side, and that's. Well, they just said, okay, if he's going to hit a grounder, it's most likely going to be the right side. And when he gets pitches to hit, a lot of times the balls that he hits just don't stay in the park. And that's when he gets on those hot streaks. He is three for 21 on the trip with two RBIs. And he has struck out eight of those 21 at bats. Two and two the count. Towards left center field. Bourne is on the run. Still going after it. Makes the catch and then goes into a dive. Right in front of Murphy, the left fielder. Well, he can go get him. I, you know, I don't see him on an everyday basis, but everybody said he's a plus defender and his range. I mean, he hits it with one hand. I mean, look where Murphy, the ball's coming back to him. And he's ready to dive and Bourne dives in front of him. Real good route he took there. Spilling over after the catch. And he it really wasn't he he got to it pretty easily. And of course Carrasco's going, that's that's a couple of extra bases if he doesn't catch that ball. He's very happy about it. That might have been a triple because the, the way the yeah. outfielders were going would have taken him time to recover. So nicely done by Bourne. He robs Davis. One one on Delman Young. Delman struck out his first at bat, one of two strikeouts by Carrasco. He has five hits and 20 at bats on the trip. And foul the other way. The Orioles are two and four on the trip. This is the tenth rubber game to decide a series. They are six and three in the prior nine. This will be a huge boost to get this win after a frustrating two to one loss yesterday to get this series heading into a day off. The Orioles are now eighth in the league in team batting. They were third in the league on Memorial Day. One and two on Delman is battling here. Quickly got behind in the count. And he's down on strikes. Yeah, same uh, formula. Yeah, maybe a pitch or two to foul off. Nothing really hittable, and then he just buries him with a slider. Watch this ball go down. For Baltimore, stepping into the plate, the designated hitter, Jimmy Perez. The other part of this strikeout is look how Gome keeps it in front of him. If it gets by him, uh, Delman Young might have been. Able to get the first. I don't know if there's better four starters in baseball than the Indians have. The way, not only what 
we saw we saw this last year when the Orioles came in here. They saw Kluber and Carrasco and, and Salazar. Yeah, their weak link is Markham, who pitched against the Orioles on Friday, and he kept them in the game. He allowed three runs in six and a third, and then the bullpen allowed a couple of add-on runs, and the Orioles won five to two. Hey, Zach McAllister came in throwing 98, and then got in trouble the next inning. That's where they got those add-on runs. So there's uh, Mickey Calloway. The pitching coach. Uh, Buck was talking about. I guess he had him. Uh, yeah, he, he was a pitcher for Buck. When yeah. Buck managed in the minors. Buck's had everybody. <laughs> He's been around yeah, long enough. He either played for him, played with him. And yeah. a base hit for Paredes past the diving try of Carlos Santana. Oh, did Jimmy need that? So he is on with a two out single. Well, he's actually had a couple of at bats today. And uh, they've been good ones. I mean, that looked like a change up. Maybe something stays up, and he's all over it. So Paredes, who was one for 13 on the trip before that single, just his third hit in his last 34 at bats. The Orioles need a few more of these bats to heat up at the same time. Here's Hardy. And he'll look at strike one. Carrasco, seven wins, three here at home, and the other four on the road. Decisions in all 11 of his starts on the year. 12th start already for Carrasco. And then Hardy late in its own two. A very convoluted year for J.J. Hardy with the injury. We watched him early in the spring. He said, boy, he's healthy. Back problems are gone. And then the uh, the fall hurt his left shoulder. Non-throwing shoulder, but that, that injury lingered. Carrasco's ahead of him. Nothing in two. Towards the middle. There's a base hit. He hung a slider on an 0-2 pitch. Paredes thought about going to third, but puts on the brakes. So after two retired back to back singles and you want this uh, for a number of reasons obviously it gives you opp opportunities to uh, to score. There's the hanging breaking ball the uh, view from behind home plate. And the harder you hit it more difficult it is to defend it and the other thing is the pitch count. Want to get Carrasco out of there. So the Orioles they uh, the, the one offensive number that's well two actually that have been good are the, the home runs they're fifth they added one today their run is on an Adam Jones home run and the other thing is how the, how they hit with runners in scoring position 294 coming in as a team even though they were 0 for 3 yesterday no chance for Ryan Flaherty here two on and two down and fouls it off the other way well the Orioles have 25 wins and they have homered in 21 of those 25 wins. It has been the, the formula for their success as it was last year. Yeah, you know, close to what, about 47% of the runs scored last year via the home run? Number one in the major leagues. And it's good when you get them. And a good take on a ball in the dirt. Well, the Orioles this year coming into this game just under 40%. Actually, that'll be over 40% now. So 89 of the 224 runs coming in on home runs. Flaherty would love a single here. Foul tip straight down at the plate. Carrasco gets ahead of him one and two. Well, he was ahead of Hardy 0 and two, but he hung a slider. He may not make that mistake, even though uh, they like to go soft. Uh, I think you know, throw enough fastballs, either make your pitches away, come up and in on Flaherty, and then go soft. Change ups, curveballs. And that was a pitch to hit in the sense that it was a fastball, but it was a good one, had good movement. And it may have gotten a piece of Jan Gomes. You saw Marvin Hudson go out and have a conversation with Carrasco just to stall a bit. But two on two out and one and two on Flaherty.
And then a roller foul to stay alive. And there was the changeup. It's a hard one. Between the uh, the difference between 88 and 95 or 6, and then the little movement and turns it over a little bit. Well, they're making them work. Approaching 70 pitches already. And as he works here in the fourth. Upstairs wouldn't chase. Orioles have had base runners in all four innings, but just the one run so far on the Adam Jones solo home run. Paredes at second and Hardy at first with two down. Outside ball three. And this is a huge break for the Orioles. Now the runners will get a head start on three and two. Well, maybe you'll get another fastball to hit. Uh, it's no guarantee, and that's why the staff is good. They're, we saw that with uh, Salazar and even Markham on a lesser scale, because he's not a power guy. And that's what's so hard about hitting with two strikes, and that's why the league average is usually what last year 176. You got to, I mean, you got to cover hard, and soft, and up and down, and in and out. And and it's outside ball four. So on the seventh pitch of the at bat, Flaherty earns a walk. And after two outs and nobody on, the Orioles load the bases. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering if the uh, Hardy hang breaking ball might have affected his. You know, okay, maybe it's not my best pitch. But he doesn't walk a whole lot of people. I mean, most of his starts, what, one game all the way back in May, he walked three. Other than that, every start, two or less. And here comes Mickey Galloway to have a little conversation. Well, he walked three total in April. <laughs> well, he doesn't give up many home runs. Four, and then you can add Adam Jones. Actually, five, excuse me. And four in May, one in one in April. So now he he's thrown six home runs on the season. And, then, and that's through his first well, 12 starts or into his 12 starts. A well, big chance here for the Orioles. A two out rally in the making. And then Manny Machado, who singled on bunt single, his last at bat. So Paredes at third, Hardy at second, and Flaherty at first with two down. And yeah, Manny's a very a little bit like Delman Young, where he's a slasher. You just don't know where to play him. That's why pretty much they play him a couple of steps in center to right, and everybody else straight away. Slow roller towards third. This is going to be a tough play. Chisinau picks it up, bobbles it, and the run scores. That's going to be an infield hit and an RBI for Machado. Yeah, they're going to kind of boo a little bit only, but I think that's more of the result, the fact that he couldn't make the play, but he's back, back where he's supposed to be. You know, man, he's not bunting. He bunted his way on last time, so you can see how far back he is. And I mean, he gets a pretty good jump, but he's going to bare him. Anytime you bare hand the ball, it is much more difficult. I played so many years, and I'm sure all the good managers, Frank Cohen, Shaw Walter, Earl Weaver says, "Hey, catch the ball, make the play, and if he beats it out, you've given yourself a chance. If you bare hand it and you don't come up with the ball, and that's what happens." So a 2 nothing Oriole leader Snyder who swings through it on one. Mark Sepchinski now getting loose one of the two left handers in the pen. We have not seen him this weekend yet. You saw when Mickey Calloway was visiting with Carrasco the pitch count starting to mount here. This will be a 74th pitch. Strike on the corner a little late call by Marvin Hudson. Well, it looked like a knee high strike and there have been a couple of those that he hasn't called it seems to be a little bit more of a high ball umpire. So the Orioles getting a run in that infield hit. Two nothing lead but still more out there if Snyder can deliver. Round ball swept foul behind Wayne Kirby. Now you look at Travis Snyder. He came in at 263 with a home run, 10 RBIs. 
His batting average runners in scoring was 261, so a couple points lower. His lifetime batting average is 248. So while he hadn't hit and driven the ball like I think they would have liked, he's actually above his lifetime numbers. Looking for his first RBI on the trip. Upstairs. Yeah, there's a good take. And he's also gone, not that he's a, a power threat, Jim, but he's gone 102 at bats since his only home run of the year. Which was hit on April 12th. And one and two on him, bases loaded, two down. Line drive center field, and it falls in for a base hit. Here's one run to score. Flaherty heading home. The throw, the slide. He is safe at the plate. It is a two-run single for Snyder, and the Orioles have built a 4-0 lead. So big, the, big hit for Snyder. Yeah, with one hand. Uh, it was a good pitch and a bad result for Carrasco, but the Orioles got to love it. Look at that. Down, cover the plate. It's the one thing we've seen him do. I, I mean, he's deliberate. You know, Bourne doesn't throw that well. Pretty good throw, but just up the line enough that Flaherty can get around Gomes. Great angle right here. He clears him. He tries to swipe him by the time. And I don't even think he did touch him. Uh, the, the left hand and arm of uh, Ryan Flaherty across the plate. So huge, huge clutch hit. Well, this is the fifth time on the year he's allowed at least four runs. Twice he's allowed five, and the Orioles not done yet. Manny stopped at second base, so he's at second with Snyder at first. Flaherty drew the walk to load the bases, and a terrific slide at the plate to avoid that tag by Jan Gomes. So Manny and Snyder, second and first with two down. Here's Adam Jones, the eighth Oriole to bat in this inning, and this inning began two outs and nobody on as Davis was robbed and Delman Young struck out. That's a broken bat bloop to first. Santana's there, and he's got it for the out, and the inning ends. But a big beginning for the Orioles as they get four hits in plate three. Mid-fourth in Cleveland, 4 nothing O's. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Bud Norris, first start since May 10th. Big, big strikeout. And for Bud, that's uh, one of his four strikeouts. Michael Bourne right on the outside corner to get out of uh, harm's way. Well, good stuff by Bud. 42 pitches through the first three innings. Uh, 25 of them over the plate. Manny Machado's infield hit got the second run in and led to the base hit by Snyder getting two more in. Now that's a rally when you begin it with two outs and nobody on four hits and a walk to get in the three runs. So now Bud will look to have a, a shutdown inning. Here's David Murphy. And it's over but low one and oh. Yeah, it's kind of amazing how innings can get away with you. I mean Paredes gets a hit hit what three for thirty two you say or whatever. Hardy hits a hanger two strikes you get ahead of him. You know then Flaherty he'll walk him and then. 
Manny gets the infield and, hit. And Flaherty and, was one and two in the count. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's why this game you can't ever take it for granted. You, you have to be so much in the moment to be good. And this one's drilled to the corner, and that's a base hit. Delvin Young over to play the car. Murphy has good speed. He hits for second, and he's got a leadoff double. Well, you got an off day tomorrow. But Norris, 57 pitches in that stuff, and he—I mean, we talked about being in the moment. This is a floating changeup. And, might be the right pitch, but certainly the wrong location, unless you're David Murphy, and then you go, "Thank you very much." This is a nice series. Two for three, and you know only the three at bats. And they're looking to get back into the game. And I would imagine Buck Showalter. Can't imagine the leash will be that long. With an off day, hey, you got to win this ball game. And he misses to Brandon Moss, one and zero. Oh. Moss drew a walk his first at bat. That is the lone walk allowed by Bud so far. Hard hit ball, base hit down the line. The Indians will get on the board, and Brandon Moss is going to head to second as Delman Young runs it down. Back to back doubles, and it's four to one. Yeah, that breaking ball stays up. So hang and change up, breaking ball. Kind of inside middle, so all you have to do is drop the head. You're playing uh, pretty much straightaway defense, so the ball over the bag is going to be a double. That's just a hanger. And when you see that, you get a little bit alarmed if you're Dave Wallace and uh, Buck Showalter. And not only do you get the run in, you get another guy in scoring position. So we always talk about it. I mean, ad nauseum about. You, know, you, you put three on the board to make it four nothing. You want to shut down inning. You hang a couple of pitches, and they're they're feeling pretty good about themselves. Well, here is Nick Swisher, and his job is somehow get the get the runner over. Bud gets it by him. A good fastball, and you read that swing. Buck, Buck Showalter was talking about. I mean, pretty much. A, a, he always talks about the classic case of the obvious, but you got two people. You have your catcher and your pitcher that need to read the bat. That sometimes dictates what you want to throw. That's why they come back with another fastball. The Kagadon now getting loose. The other lefty in the pen. The Orioles have three lefties and two switch hitters in their lineup today. Hill the third, he didn't go, so it's two and one. Yeah, you better. His bat may be slow, but he still has his eye. Yeah, he thought about swinging it. And so there's your uh, pitch count. And he's mixed him up. This inning got him in trouble, breaking balls, and that off speeds the changeup. Got it by him. He couldn't reach it. Yeah, well, this, yeah, this is somebody that's coming off injuries. Bat slowed, so you. You've been late on the fastball. I better get it going, and then you swing at ball three. And the intention also is to hit the ball to the right side. I mean, he did get two hits yesterday, but if you don't get a base hit, at least move the runner. The Orioles aren't going to play their infield in with a four to one lead. Chance to get another run. No. And it hit him. Well, you're going to. Just get your pitch yourself right out of the inning if you're Bud Norris in a sense because you're not going to be out there very long. So that ought to get somebody up in the bullpen. There's a breaking ball. I mean, late on the fastball, and you come back three and two and hit him. Well, that's not what Bud needed. That's, but it is what they needed. So they get two on with none out, a run in, and it brings the tying run to the plate. Yeah, I mean, it starts at him and stays right at him. You know, you wonder, if Bud, that long time on the bench as the Orioles batted in the fourth, if it may have affected his sharpness here, because the first three innings he was really good with his command, not as much here. 
Well, he did come into the inning with 42 pitches, 25 of them for strike, 17 for balls. That's not the ratio you won, and then so that might have something to do with it. The other fact is he really hadn't been pitching a whole lot. He got three rehabs after missing a month. He threw what, 57 pitches in it against Triple A hitters. These guys can hit. And then if you make bad pitches, which is the case here in the fourth, you're going to let him back in the game. Chisenhall fouls it back. He struck out his first at bat, so he's now 0 for his last 11 and 4 for his last 27. And I will say this Buck Showalter is giving him, I didn't think he'd give him much leash, but he's giving him a lot. Nobody's up in the bullpen yet. I played for a manager Earl Weaver. Probably two hitters ago, somebody would have been up. And of course, his theory was that was supposed to encourage you to pitch better. Right. Because you turn around and see the guy. <laughs> exactly. And then on occasion, and we didn't have too many pitchers, you didn't you mind coming in. He'd get somebody up that you knew, he knew you knew you didn't want coming in and didn't even pitch better. Ball and a strike on Chisholm Hall. Check swing and it's outside. Ball two. Another run allowed by an Orioles pitcher after the Orioles score. And a hitter's count for Chisholm Hall at two and one. Slap foul the other way. Chisholm Hall's 26. He's in his fifth season with the Indians. He grew up in North Carolina but played his baseball at the University of South Carolina. The alma mater of Steve Pierce as well. He was a first round pick of the Indians in 2008. A lot of first round picks on this team. Had a nice year last year. Hit 280, 13 home runs. Three of them came in one game. Throw behind the runner, and he is. Oh, it looked like they had him. Safe is the call by Gibson. Looked like the glove was down. Well, Flaherty said uh, he's out, and I would imagine this would be a review of what. I mean, if you didn't tag him. And I think uh, this would be one of those reviewable. Did he get that front arm? So may Gibson is saying that he missed the tag and the hand got back in. Well, he might have. What a play, though. He worked on it all spring training, and he usually figured, well, it's not going to come into play. But Bud Norris obviously struggling. And they are waiting to see if Buck is going to ask for a review as they're looking it over. Yeah, I don't think he'd review that particular angle unless there's something else. And course, you know, I was reading the other day that a lot of times. So here comes the ball. Obviously, he's out if he can tag it. And the Orioles will ask for a review. I mean, the ball beat him so much; it's almost it. It didn't seem totally obvious, but I was reading something with Jim where a lot of times. The clubs don't see all the angles that they see in New York. Right. The uh, well, the, the the two feeds from each club's television, the, the cameras are available. So it's just a question of if, looked, if he tagged yeah. any part of the hand. Well, it looked like he it, from that angle it looked like he got the top of his left, or excuse me, his right hand. And then he really pulls the glove away, so it's not like he's trying to tag the other arm, which is his left arm. Well, in the old days, you were so out on this play right. without the replay because the ball beat you, and that's usually what umpires would look at. Yeah, I think he's touched the top of his right hand. And this would be a big play because obviously, uh, Bud Nor Norris needs some help. Yeah, it looked like he got the top of that right hand, and we'll see what they think about it. Because that's really all that matters. And what they look at is evidence to overturn the original call. Well, right there, it, did he hit it? JJ Hardy, one of the, uh, I mean, it's a gold glove shortstop. That's usually a play that he would put the tag down. But a lot of times you, things that we don't know from up here is okay, you're moving, you're sliding, the throw definitely beats him. So. Right there, they're, they're going to. Did he touch that right hand or not? Well, and as long as this is taking, there obviously is doubt. Okay. If uh, there was no doubt that the call was wrong, it wouldn't be taking this long. Jim Joyce and Greg Gibson are on the headsets to New York. 
And they did show the play several times on the big scoreboard here. Very little reaction from the fans, which usually tells you they're <laughs> concerned it's going to get switched over. Or you could see J.J. Harvey immediately come up and say, I got him. So Jim Joyce on your left, he's the crew chief, and Greg Gibson on your right, he's the umpire who made the call. And they have reached a verdict. And it's safe. Yep. So I guess you couldn't definitively say whether you really tagged him. That's normally a play that JJ is able to get the glove in a better position, and it just wasn't good enough for them to overturn it. So the call on the field stands, no out recorded. That was a real good call as Hardy snuck behind him. Unfortunately, the tag not applied in the opinion of the umpires. Well, it certainly cut down Brandon Moss's lead. I'll tell you that. And that's why the play is designed. It, in a perfect uh, scenario, you pick him off, which they almost did. And down on strikes goes Chisenhall for a big first out for Bud Norris. That sounded like a foul tip. Yeah, got perfect fastball down and away. Got in trouble. The first two doubles were on breaking balls. And what did, uh, if you were with us yesterday, Buck Showalter talking about one of the great guys of foul tips being able to hang on to him is Matt Wieters, and that's what he did there. And the other thing he said, there's no way to practice that. That's right. <laughs> he said, he asked the writers, you guys know any uh, hitters who can, uh, you know, simulate foul tips for our catchers? If you do, let me know. <laughs> well, he's always looking for an edge. Oh, I'd absolutely. certainly be one of them if you could pull it off. Here's John Gomes, who's been hot. And Bud misses outside. He's got a four game hitting streak now with his base hit in the second inning. Six for his last 13. And he's uh, used the whole field. Uh, we saw that yesterday. Doubled right over the bag at third. Poked one into a good pitch down and away. And I would imagine that when you sprain the uh, medial. Collateral ligament in your right knee, and you're a catcher. That's going to bother you. That's why he missed all the time in April. And just think about it. It's it's when you load the bat. Watch how important that right leg is. Slider off the plate. Jan Gomes came in batting 200. This is only his 15th game because of the knee injury. And Good a pitch. strike. Yep. Fastball count. He's looking for it, and Bud throws something else. And Bud has never lost to the Indians. 2 and 0 oh in each of the two times he faced them. Inside nearly hit him, ball three. But already over uh, at least the pitches he, at least the pitch count that he threw in his rehab at 57, now he's at 61. And it hasn't been an easy game in the sense that it's, it's, it's 4 to 1, but it just became 4 to 1. Right. So I always thought that. And it's a close game and pitches you can add a few just for the stress of it. There's another great pitch. Fans reacting to Gomes who thought he had a ball. Well, a full count. Yeah two times in this count. It, 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 he's got behind him. He's looking fastball and he's thrown probably the two best sliders of the afternoon. Will he do it again. Three and two on Gomes. Line down the line foul. Oh boy that ball moved in on him. Yeah. But do you notice how he got the bat head out. I mean it was up on the bat a little bit but. But that's the difference you do the hitters nowadays. The, the ones that are going to hit for high averages. The front arm you could see him. Just really kind of take his front arm. That's his left arm out of the way. So to try to get the bat head to the ball. And he was able to do it. But the ball was inside so the only place he could hit it is. His foul. And two on with one out and three and two on Gomes. Loop the other way and it is foul. And another so, ball up and in. So he bloop one to the left side and he bloops one to the right side. Well part of hitting is not striking out. And if you're Bud Norris you'd love to have that maybe. You'll get back to the 
the slider which he's been able to throw over to Gomes get a double play ball. But what's so annoying is you make two pretty good pitches up and in and he fouls them off and of course his. He wants a better pitch to hit. Question for Bud Norris can you make a, a quality pitcher. And he got him. Got a fastball by him. So two down in the inning. What a pitch by Bud Norris. So double double hit batter strikes out Chisenhall and now Gomes. With a high right. 94. And this is three and two. So seven strikeouts for Bud. Ties his season high. The game April 15th against the Yankees. He also struck out seven. You can see Manny Machado very aware that Bourne might try to drop a bunt down. So he's not way back, but making sure that he can be able to cover it. And there's that outside corner again. Mike Michael Bourne saying, could we just make the, the plate a little bit narrower? And it's not going to happen. He hasn't been happy all weekend. No, no that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> You'd think by now he'd make an adjustment. If they're going to call it, they're going to call it. He's right there. He's looking down in the outside corner. He goes, that, that, that outside corner is so wide. <laughs> Marvin Hudson, come on. I thought the play was only 17 <laughs> inches wide. Well, it's a little wider. And there's another one. Yeah. And you have to understand that the, the plate's 17 inches, but the ball's about, what, a little bit over two inches, two and a quarter? So if you have that lane, and he's right in that lane, you can make that plate. Only the edge of the ball has to be on the plate, so you can get another two inches on the outside corner. It's what it annoys hitters is when it's four or five inches off the plate, which we saw over this road trip. Well, he couldn't get him to chase. He certainly might have been anxious, but that one sailed. Well, if you go back to yesterday's game, uh, the ball to Jimenez got in trouble, and where he struck Bourne out eventually was up and in. And then he got Chisenhall up and in. So you establish your way now. For Matt Wieters and Bud Norris is this tandem. Where are we going? Looks like it way again. Weak ground ball towards the middle. Hardy is right there. He'll step on the bag ahead of the sliding swisher and the inning ends. And a real good job by Bud Norris. A run was in, none down, and he gets out of the jam. in Secaucus, New Jersey. Now the Orioles have the 25th overall pick in the first round. They also have the 36th pick compensation for Nelson Cruz signing with Seattle. Then in the second round, they'll select the 68th overall. And then in the third round, the 102nd overall pick. So the Orioles, and here's Jim Callis, who's an expert on this. Two of the best drafts of all time, 85-86, littered with college guys that were high draft picks out of high school but didn't sign. Uh, there are so many uh, fallacious draft studies where someone will say college players are so much better, but you have a lot of other players that say no. 
So uh, it depends on your scouting director. I guess it depends on your need, and I guess it depends where you draft, what you go after. Well, don't you think ultimately you want to take the best player available? I, I think that's what most scouting directors will tell you. I mean, they're the uh, the Matt Hobgoods of the world where you talk about some signability. And that, while well, he's still pitching, that certainly has not. But I think that, I would think that would be what you would be trying to do. And then, again, it might be the best pitcher available, the best position player. You know, Theo Epstein, uh, what they've done in Chicago uh, with the Cubs is because hitting is it's going down, they've gone for hitters. Right. Well, when you're you know, picking. They traded, well, they traded for Arietta, They signed uh, Lester. Uh, and now, you know, they have Solar. They have uh, Baez, who was up and down. We saw him last year. Terry Francona's coming out. He must detect a possible injury. And Carrasco yeah, well, saying, what's saying, what's wrong? Other than I went two and two and one. And well, with the Orioles picking 25th overall, you would think that Gary Rasich will go with that philosophy that they'll line up their board at least 25 deep, and the, the best player is still available when they pick. You, likely that'll be the selection. Yeah, and then you have to look at your minor league system, and ours is not talking about the Orioles and well, there I mean there's your wind up that's a 2 0 pitch and I don't see anything maybe just that gesture there at the end concerned the manager this is outside three and one on weeders weeders will be followed by Davis and young No, we saw Nick Hagadon, uh, uh, and he's up probably because the next guy. Deep right field for Weeders. Back it goes. It is off the wall and in play. Brandon Moss misplays the carry, and Weeders will get the second base. And he's going to try for three. Here's the throw. He slides in safely. <laughs> Matt well, yeah. Weeders may have deeped Brandon Moss. Looked like he was pulling up, and then he just kept on going. An applause <laughs> from the bench. <laughs> well. Wow. You know, I was talking to Richie Van Sells all during spring training because Matt wanted to be back. Uh, you know, the first game was uh, March 17th. It looks like he might hit this ball out of here. And there's Moss, plays a double into right there, and why not keep going? And what he was talking about is he said he's never had anybody going through Tommy John surgery that did that worked harder than Matt Weeders. So now with all this conditioning Matt thinks he's fast and it works and he got a triple the Orioles are becoming triples machine so pitching change Carrasco leaves Orioles threatening for more in the fifth Take advantage of it. The, uh, they have the, uh, the home run by Adam Jones, a three-run uh, uh, inning off of uh, Carrasco, and oh, yeah, 
pretty much the same, but he just uh, they they got some infield hits. They got some big hits. He got the two out uh, hit by Snyder, and then Hagedorn. We saw him. Uh, he he came in on Friday night, hard throwing lefty. There's another one they acquired in uh, another trade as Victor Martinez went from here to to the Red Sox, and he came over. So Nick throws on 93-94 slider, worked on a cutter. So the Orioles uh, with the infield in and shifted with Chris Davis. Hagadone's going to try to strike him out. Chris is going to try to get a ball in the air or by the infielders. High fly ball to right. Back on it goes Moss. This should be deep enough. As he shades his eyes from the sun, he makes the catch, and here comes Weeders. And there's a nice manufactured run. Wheels Weeders. Gets all the way around a third on a triple and he scores on a sack fly. Well, there you go. Another another nickname. And well, that's what I like to call him. Well, he, Wheels. He, he, <laughs> he was wheel his way home for the off day, but uh, he comes back. He gets a couple of hits on Friday night, the triple, and then it makes it easier to get another run in. They play in, and Chris Davis does what you want to do. So the Orioles get the sack fly. Davis gets his 33rd RBI. He leads the club in ribbies, and here is Delman Young with the bases now empty. Fastball misses to Delman. 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Up to Matt, that's oh, triples are old news. Hit four in the minor leagues, and that's his fourth in the big leagues. Just adding to his. Scrapbook the legend of accomplishments his legend the legend of Matt Delman young has never faced Hagadon and So the Orioles and Indians they play a home and home and that's it Hard hit ball towards the middle. That's a base hit past the dive of Avilas So yeah. Delman was down in the count and didn't matter And a base hit What's a runner on with one down? The O's and Indians will meet again at Oriole Park. It's a three game weekend series beginning Friday, June 26th. On Sunday, June 28th, first 20,000 fans, 15 and over, will receive an Orioles cap presented by DAP. So don't miss this annual fan favorite and come on out and enjoy a summer afternoon at Oriole Park. For your tickets, Orioles.com or call 888 848 Bird. Now the Indians had had a streak of 17 consecutive runners stranded on base before the Davis sack fly. That, that's a tough call for Hagedon, though. Runner third and nobody down. And then Paredes batting right out in front of that and nearly hits one into Bobby Dickerson. That's why he plays a little bit deeper. A former Oriole, former Marlin, former Dodger. Briefly. Uh, briefly, yeah, for. I don't, well, he they signed him, never and DFA'd him, and designated for assignment <laughs> in the same moment. Nice to know you. Indians were happy to pick him up, though. Yeah. Well, Jimmy with a good take looks a, a bit more confident after his base hit last inning. Yes, that'll do it. You can relax. You don't grip the bat as much. Of course, Hagedon, uh, he's also one of these guys that he matches up better against lefties. Righties hitting him 300. That's why Webb is up. But And it gets past Gomes, and Delman Young is going to advance. Yeah, he just uh, bounces the breaking ball, and... And you come in, you know what you have to do against lefties. Uh, you know, you may not know they're hitting 300 against you, but you know that maybe you're not making the quality pitches that you'd like. So you overthrow your pitches, and Gomes, who's done a nice job of uh, blocking balls this whole series, that ball gets by him. So another chance to get a run with Delman at second base with one down. Hard at ball, but right to third. Shizanol has this one. And he gets it across the first. See, so that's three quality at bats for Paredes. You're not always going to get hits, but I, I remember when I was doing Monday Night Baseball and Daryl Strawberry came to the big leagues. You know, he might have five at bats, maybe to get one quality at bat, and the next year I'd be doing the same games. And the Mets, of course, this is 84, 85, 86. The next year, two out of five, three out of five, hit 39 home runs. So you're always working just to have good. And that's kind of what we talked about in the opening just the quality of the bat. You're not always going to get hits. Have some uh, have an idea when you go up to the plate. And the Orioles have done a nice job this afternoon. 
Martin another opportunity to get another run in. J.J. Hardy now with Delman at second and two down. But the other thing about this inning is Bud gave up the run but got out of a bigger jam that was the Indians certainly had a rally going. They had a run in first and second and nobody out and did not add a run and now the Orioles get that run right back. J.J. was part of that rally last inning. After Davis lined out, robbed by Bourne, and Delman struck out, Paredes got it going with a single, then Hardy singled, and Flaherty walked. And then the infield hit by Machado on the swinging bunt, and then Travis Snyder with a big two-run single with two downs to get the other two runs in. Seems every pitcher on the staff has a mid-90s fastball. Well. Remember when Davey Johnson was managing the Orioles and he he called it his National League bullpen. A bunch of hard throwers Alan Mills and Benitez I mean Randy Myers had what 40. Six out of 48 or out of seven 48 tries. And There's this one out one. of the glove of Jan Gomes and going to third is Delman Young. Yeah these are one of those games where we're hearing smattering booze because it's just it's ugly baseball. You know, Moss, I mean, it all started when Moss played a double. I mean, Matt Weeders, you know, we already bounced one. That one goes off his glove. It would be, it would certainly help Gomes if Hagedon was somewhere in the vicinity right. of his glove. But it, they played a double into a triple. And then the Orioles added that, that fifth run. Hardy fouls it all. That was a pass ball, by the way. So the wild pitch got Young to second. The pass ball gets him to third. Gomes is penalized by a pitcher who's having difficulties with the strike zone. And three and two with Delman Young at third and two down. A run in for the O's and a five to one lead. Fouled off just below us. I remember when Mark Wiley was a pitching coach here in Baltimore. He we used to have color charts. He'd color chart how close and how often what the percentage was of your pitches to where the glove was. Mm -hmm. Remember that. And he kind of so you get a pretty good idea whether you were anywhere near the intended target. Good at bat here for Hardy. Bounce slowly to third. Chisenhall backhands and fires across to get Hardy, and that ends the inning. The Orioles do get a run on the triple by Weeder, sack fly by Davis. Mid fifth in Cleveland, 5 to 1 O's. The Orioles will welcome in the Red Sox to town to begin a three game series. Miguel Gonzalez will be on the mound against one time Orioles prospect Eduardo Rodriguez. Our coverage on Masson 2 begins at 6 30 with those extra presented by Southwest. And then game coverage at 7 o'clock. We've got all the access you need 
right here on Mass. Yeah, these are some pretty, uh, looking at these numbers, so the Orioles have outscored them. They did have 18 runs in one game. That was a Sunday game in Baltimore. The Red Sox have out home room. The Orioles ERA. Of course, 18 runs has a lot to do with that. And uh, these teams ahead of the Orioles, so hopefully the Orioles will win today, and when they get back into their division, they will do what they haven't been able to do, which is put a winning streak together. That would be good timing. Getting their players back. But Norris, one of them, as he pitches here into the fifth. Well, the last time the Orioles saw the Red Sox, they got two out of three. They had the uh, David Lowe walk-off home run and then the 18-7 to win. And it looked like they were getting set to go on a roll and then the two cancel games because of the unrest in Baltimore and then the game with no fans and then home games on the road. And it looked like it was about to click and then the interruption. Well, there the Orioles, hopefully they'll be, they'll be a better ball club. You get Norris back. I don't know if 15 wins is a normal year for him. He probably won't do it this year because he started out one and four, but just to get him back every fifth day. You know, you got five good starters. You got Weeders back, one of the outstanding catchers in baseball. Switch hitting catcher. Now, of course, yeah, this game is far from over, and right. everybody knows that if you ever played the game. And I think they'll watch the pitch count at now, what, 73? 43 strikes and 30 balls out of the zone. Bouncer towards the middle. There's Hardy back of the bag. See, Good see that, strong throw got yeah, him. Yeah, that is what Bud Norris could do last year. When you, you needed to make the two-strike pitch, he could throw it knee-high, low and away. And that's the Dave Wallace, Dom Chidi effect. That's what they preach. And right there, that's exactly what he did. I mean, a high ball hitter, a inside middle hitter, he threw it down and threw it down and away. And you get an easy out. Wallace will be pleased with that. As he said in the game, there's Dom in the bullpen with his chart. Here's Kipnis. And as Dave told us before the game, he, he really didn't know what to expect from Bud today. Was he going to guarantee eight innings, 110 pitches? No, because he can't. But so far, so good. And he pitched himself out of the one jam he pitched himself into. This ball slicing towards deep left center field. Adam Jones way out there, and it's over his head. And it bounces against the wall. Adam quickly fires in, and there's a one-out double for Kipnis. Yeah, he has been so good to, to be able to strike him out, keep him off base. As we mentioned, 398 hitter here in Cleveland with four of his five home runs. Just a little breaking ball. They, I mean, it stays pretty much in the middle of the plate. It is down, but it's down the middle. And that's why he's able to hit it over the head of uh, Adam Jones. I mean, hit it a long way. And you can see the... Yesterday, that's probably a ball that gets caught because of the wind. Today, because it wasn't knocked down by that wind, it actually aided it double over the head of your center fielder. Carlos Santana now has grounded out twice, once into the shift. Ryan Flaherty in shallow right field where he is right now, and this ball's foul back. That'll be in the crowd. Yeah, one of those plays where if you have somebody on versus not on, it might have been a base hit, but because you didn't last time, Santana, who I mean, he's only uh, what in this series, he's well, he's, he's only one for five, but that was the, the big double that, that won him the game yesterday. But if you don't throw him strikes, he'll take the walk. And that's why it leads the American League in base on balls. Can't reach that 0-2. Kipnis with that double extends his hitting streak to five in a row. Yeah, He's wonderful. also hit an 18 straight here at home. Yeah, Santa, Santana, anytime anybody grabs around the oblique, you get a little bit concerned. He was grimacing after that swing. So 18 in a row at home for Kipnis, who's at second base. 0-2 on Santana. Lifted the left. Snyder backs up. Easy play for him. And he's got it. Kipnis is going to tag to draw a throw, and it's fired right in. And two out in the inning. Let's get a look at our PNC minor league report. Kevin Gosman pitched last night in Wilmington, Delaware for Frederick. And his first rehab start went very well. Three innings, one hit, did not allow a run, struck out four, 40 pitches to get through the three innings. Now the next step is he's going to go pitch a buoy on the 11th. 
And then, Buck said before the game, they will reevaluate. Yeah, they made it a point. Number one, we want you to feel well. He did. Number two, Bud Norris gave up 13 earned runs in his 11 and two-thirds rehab. He said, we want you to really focus. And <laughs> Buck was going. Buck Showalter, the Orioles skipper, said he had 98. So they're very pleased with what he was able to do. David Murphy takes ball one. 98, that, that'll they, work. Well, he can throw that. That's why he's the number one draft choice. There's what we're talking about yep. with the draft. Yep. Best player available. Now, what? He was four. four. Yeah, number, number four. four. So, up the list. And a college pitcher out of LSU. Well, here are the recent picks. Whereas last year, no first round pick because of the signing of Ubaldo. Hunter Harvey in 2013. Kevin Gosman 2012. Dylan Bundy the year before. And uh, Mr. Machado in 2010. By the way, uh, if you have time, go to MassInSports.com. Steve Molesky, who covers the minor leagues and the draft better than anybody, he's got a real interesting story. We showed you some of the Jim Callis quotes earlier. And, Steve, a uh, real interesting article about draft philosophies and what teams, as you were talking about before, try to do or will do, or we try to anticipate <laughs> what they might do. So check that out with Steve at MassInSports.com. Outside ball three. Well, you got a real dangerous hitter with one swing on deck, and maybe that's what Matt Weeder said. Let's just try to make our pitches. Let's try to make Murphy, who's had a great series. Well, one for two today, two for three on Friday night. Because if you end up letting him on, they get the guy they want, the home run guy coming up. That was a strike. And it's not that you... I mean, this, this is why you do all your sides. It's been a little difficult because of the uh, the bronchitis for uh, for Bud. But you pride yourself as a pitcher that I okay, I can still be aggressive, but within the strike zone, I, not down the middle. I work hard enough so I know what it, it feels like to throw a ball right to where the glove is, and and he misses. And that could be the fatigue factor because uh, the pitch count now into the 80s. The kind of game that if you're Buck Showalter, and, and I'm not sure I, Buck, Buck did get out of it, but Buck was very, very, as we mentioned, a long leash. I thought it might be a little bit shorter, but you got to win this game today. And you have a pretty well-rested bullpen. And a day off tomorrow. Yeah, and so. There hasn't even been uh, activity in the Orioles bullpen. So with two down in the inning, he's going after Brandon Moss. And, of course, uh, the walks have been detrimental. This one's popped up and may stay in play. Machado's out there, and Manny's got it. He battled the sun, and in foul territory has it for the out. So Bud gets out of another jam as the Indians put two on but cannot score. We're through five innings in Cleveland. Outstanding defense being played by the O's, and the Orioles with a 5-1 to one lead. Adam Jones, great road trip. 
And already a couple of game winning home runs. Uh, here's a number nine to get the Orioles a one nothing lead. And then uh, in the fourth inning the Orioles will get three runs. Uh, Manny Machado infield hit that'll make it two to nothing. And then check out this swing. Talk about quality swings. Two strikes. Try to protect. That's exactly what uh, Travis Snyder does. And then Ryan Flaherty getting a very good jump off of uh, second base with two outs, just under the tag of Jan Gomes. So the uh, the Orioles five to one. That's our your Geico game highlights. Fifteen minutes could save you fifteen percent or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com for a free rate quote. We know about Ryan Webb because uh, he was with the Orioles in spring training and then uh, did go over to the Dodgers momentarily. It actually pitched pretty well. He actually pitched pretty well for the Orioles last year. You know, sinker, slider, changeup guy. Seemed like he pitched a lot last year and then the you know, ball got up a little bit, but certainly capable when the ball's down in the zone to be very effective, which is what Terry Francona is hoping. Ryan Flaherty will lead off the number nine batter. He'll take a strike. Then the lineup flips over. Machado and Snyder will follow. Orioles looking for more add on runs, make it easier for the pitching. Flaherty drew a walk in the rally in the fourth inning. And a real good deep at bat. Chaz Rowe now getting loose. Yeah, I would uh, think that they are very happy with what Bud Norris was able to do. Pitches count what at 85? 85. Well, and he's had back to back stressful innings. There's uh, Jepsinski. Or as we like to call him, Mark. Exactly. <laughs> Jepsinski. Yeah, you don't still want to try to spell it. I know. Yeah, Zepchinski, and it begins with the letter R, which is silent. Well, it would be if I pronounce his name. <laughs> Here comes the left-hander, Mark, on. Where's number 35? Oh, lefty. That's what Joe Cronin, uh, the Hall of Fame shortstop, American League president, he used to call everybody uh, Lefty Slug. He had two names. Lefty or Slug. Yeah. That cuts down on the prep work. <laughs> and the 2-2 to Flaherty is swung out and missed. He got him. So Ryan Webb. It's Flaherty for the first out in the Orioles. Yeah, six. Something off speed, 86. Uh, I don't know if it's a backup slider or maybe a change of it. Uh, Ryan, good swing, but swings right through it. One of those breaking balls you think it's going to filter down in the zone and it just stays there. Ryan's hoping that he foul tip it. Look at him, looks back right away to see if Gomes is able to keep hold of it. Here's Manny. He's had a good day. He has. Two hits, both are infield hits, one a bunt, one a swinging bunt to drive in a run. So Manny, his 16th multi hit game, only Adam Jones has more. Adam has 17. And he has an RBI. He now has seven hits on the trip in the, this is the seventh game. Seven for 27 for Manny. Up and in, ball two. Carrasco went four innings plus one batter, charged with all five earned runs, seven hits. Hagedon in inning, one hit. And now Ryan Webb here in the sixth. Yeah. No, the Orioles have hit two of their barometers in this game, Jim. They're 22 and nine when they score four runs, they have five. And they are 21 and 15, 21 of their 25 wins with a home run. Jones homered in the first. And they don't they satisfy uh, people that want to eat pizza too? I mean, is that usually under? That is correct. That's Papa John's. Papa John's. You are alert. Day game after work after working, working game. with you, and I don't know about pizza. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. And Manny down on strikes. Yeah, so bottom of the zone. Case. Yeah, Ryan Webb. You know, it's kind of a because the Orioles win 96 games, but he pitched in 51 games for the Orioles. And then uh, when he ran in a little bit of trouble in, in maybe late July, they he, he got went down to Norfolk where he pitched pretty well for him, and then came back the month of September. But when he's rested and he gets the ball, there's a lot of movement. 
And the pitch for the Marlins, pitch for San Diego. Fourth rounder originally back in 2004. And a good guy. Going out to dinner last night, I think, with Flaherty and uh, uh, Chris Tillman. So he made a lot of friends on this club. Travis Snyder. Two runs single in the rally in the fourth. Yeah, I think he became expendable when they got Andrew Miller. He could make a lot of people expendable. Short out yeah. by Avilas. Yeah, bullet, but. So three up, three down, any four. Ryan Webb will head to the bottom of the sixth. With the Orioles enjoying a five to one lead. The Achiever in You. And by visitannapolis.org, find the Chesapeake experience at visitannapolis.org. We're along the shores of Lake Erie here in Cleveland, Ohio. And the day is done for Bud Norris. He pitched very well in his return off the DL. Yeah, really well. Uh, I think Buck Showalter talked about you know, 421 the left handers. There were seven left handed hitters for the Indians in the lineup. And uh, he was able to make a lot of pitches. Looked like he's going to get in trouble. Second time through the order. A couple of doubles, hit batsman, pitched right out of that. So uh, that was very much Bud Light. Uh, of that what we saw in 2014. Chaz Rowe, what an addition. As he's been for the for the Orioles. Uh, nine and a third scoreless innings pitch. I mean, one of the best sliders on the club. That's the fastball and the, uh, the breaking ball is the slider. 92-93, uh, a lot of strikes. So six outings, five hits, three walks, and then 11 strikeouts in those nine and a third innings. And uh, Dean Albany, the longtime Orioles scout, was saying, "Boy, if he could add a changeup, which he had when he was a starter early on in his career, he said, boy, he could probably be a starter for you." And then the next day, I said, uh, told him what Dean said. He said, we "We're just working on that <laughs> with Dom <laughs> Chidi." So, so they know he wants to have a changeup. Probably won't use it with a four-run lead. He'll just go out and. Do what he does, which is throw a lot of strikes. He'll face Nick Swisher. First ball swinging into the shift. Flaherty waits on it. And he gets it to first and one pitch, one down here in the sixth inning. The Orioles host the Yankees in a three game weekend series beginning Friday. Tickets are going fast, so don't miss out. Plus, for each game, fans are encouraged to bring any non perishable food item or a cash donation to the ballpark to benefit the Maryland Food Bank. As part of the annual Orioles Reach Food and Funds Drive presented by One Main Financial. Uh, food donations are also now being accepted at participating One Main Financial branches. For your tickets, visit Orioles.com or call 888-848-BIRD. Mike Bordick and I have it all set. We're going to go out there and encourage those Yankee fans to dig deep into their pockets <laughs> as they get into the ballpark. Well, they'll think the... Uh that they won the lottery when you come to Baltimore. Ticket prices are fair. Beautiful ballpark. Not sure. that Yankee Stadium is it? To come down for the weekend, yeah, walk around the donate harbor. to the food bank. No, exactly. They are on warning. Here's Chisenhall. 
Well, they got to be very pleased. I mean, if you're a Yankee fan, you're very happy. Joe Girardi's a terrific manager. All those injuries and whatever, and you know they can give up more runs than they swore. Yet they still are over 500. And now all of a sudden, some of their guys have gotten a little bit healthy. And especially Mark Teixeira. It's nice foul the other way to stay alive. And the biggest bat of the afternoon is uh, Lonnie Chisholm, who I don't want to really put it on him. I mean, he's one of those at the moment. Of course, this game to change. You know, you get the back-to-back -back doubles. Swisher gets hit, and then Norris able to strike him out. And that was a huge, huge at bat. And a good take right there on the hard slider. And and not only was he able to get Chisholm out, then he, he struck out Gomes, who had a really tough at bat against him. And, and then Bourne hit the little ground ball to Hardy, and you're out of the inning. They had a chance to get back in the game right there. And that is rolled foul. It's kind of baseball. You figure, you know, you struggle early if you're Lonnie Chisholm. Oh, you talked about the fact he was their number one draft choice. Then you come up against the Orioles last year, he was hitting close to 390, and that was only June. Hit 280, hit some home runs, then the league adjust. You have to figure it out again. It's the constant yin yang of baseball. Never really have it down. There's a flare, sounded like he broke his bat. I always think of it as if you're a golfer. If you're a golfer, people say, gee, how are you playing? I go, I don't know. I'll let you know the next time I play because it's very, that's the way it is. You just don't know. Did anybody ever think that Tiger Woods could shoot an 85 on a PGA Tour event? Never done it in his life, yet he did. Well, he's old. Not that old. <laughs> he's 39 is old? <laughs> I meant in athletics. Yes. Well, there's some real good senior golfers that don't shoot 85. But I, what my point is, and it's not nothing really about Tiger it's just that either you're, you're <laughs> as good as your next at bat your next your next round just the way sports and life is outside ball three so he will see a tenth pitch in this at bat from Chaz Roach isn't all really battling one out none on in the sixth yeah. 95 Chaz Rose got good stuff and throwing so much better. Didn't get to pitch that much in spring training than, than I saw him in spring training. I mean, he went three and one with what six earned runs and 22 strikeouts and 17 relief here in Santa Norfolk. So really found his stride. And that swept the first. There's Davis. He'll go to the bag unassisted. So it took 11 pitches, but he finally retires Chisenhall for the second out. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Orioles and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. You know it's funny you look at Chaz Rowe and if you read uh, any of the New York papers the Yankees have five lefties in their bullpen and they said you know what we need we need exactly what they gave the Orioles last year a right hander. So it's nice to see Chaz Rose pitching as well as he is for the Orioles. Gets ahead of Jan Gomes with a slider. I mean that last at bat is a testament to your command as a pitcher and your poise. Chisenhall's having a good bat. He's pitching. He's throwing strikes. He's fouling them off. He didn't walk them. How'd the Orioles lose yesterday afternoon? Two walks. Oh, yeah. and there's another strike. 93 with great movement. You know, I was asking him how he gets the ball to move that much. He throws, you know, usually if you throw a, a sinking fastball, you throw it with the seams. He throws a one seam fastball where he actually splits the one seam. You really have two and, and four, and it moves. And there's the slider. And then he just kind of moves his hand to the side to get the slider. Now, I've never seen anybody throw the ball like that, and the ball just dives with good velocity. There's his pitching coach. A one seamer. A one seamer. So you have the two. Well, I just imagine you can take the ball and you can actually have the two seams, but he just moves a little bit to the right. So one fingers off one, the seam. Yeah, exactly. Huh. And for him, when pitching is feel and touch. It it works, and there's the slider, and it goes down. He's a big guy at six five or six six. I mean, when you Ryan Webb, Chris Tillman, and Jazz Rowe all in the same hallway yesterday, walking down the hallway, and then. 
Flaherty, the, the short guy next to him. <laughs> and he's, what, 6'3". High pop to shallow right. Elman Young in battling the sun. And he gets there for the out. Jazz row, a three up, three down inning. Our Mazda do ups for the birds in the seventh. Adam Jones, Matt Weeders, and Chris Davis coming to bat. Uh, four nothing now. Four one. A couple of doubles and a hit batsman. And Norris strikes out Chisenhall, and then Gomes with a ten pitch at bat. He frustrated and then gets out of the inning. Ground ball right back up the middle. The Gold Glover already steps on the bag, and uh, not only you're out of the inning, the score is still four to one. That's your T-Mobile game changer. And Norris goes the first five innings uh, after not pitching since the tenth of May and was outstanding. Kind of always nice when you pitch well, they get you runs. If you leave because of circumstance, this is the fact that Bud pitch count got to 85 and he hasn't pitched since May 10th. The bullpen comes in, and now you try to add some more runs. Have a good, have a nice little afternoon before you get on the plane and go back for the off day. Adam Jones homered in the first to give the Orioles the lead. The Birds have never trailed in this game. He also hit a fly ball to the deepest part of center field that Bourne caught up against the wall. And there's a line drive into right field for a base hit. So Adam has a multi hit game, his 18th on the year, and a leadoff single. And now here's our Lexus drive of the game, Matt Weeders, in the fifth inning. Well, ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Here it is. It's a high drive to right. More Moss plays it into a double. No, it's a triple as he never stops. Wheels Weeders, the drive of the game, brought to you by Lexus of Towson, the area's number one volume Lexus dealer, five years running. See why at LexusofTowson.com. Well, plays right along with Lexus. That's right. Wheels. I have a Lexus. That's a nice car. You do? I have a, a hybrid. Hybrid? Yeah, a 450, 450X mm. hybrid, yeah. Trying to save the environment, Jim. Trying to be green. Adam gets back. <laughs> I've actually had two of them. You know, I'm too high. You know, you well, you introduced my my stepson Spencer, who's autistic, when he at the, the at the uh, trophy or the uh, statue Sculpt sculpture. Yeah, first one. We're driving to the, the lecture dealership. We said, "What colors should we get?" Uh, black on black. We want to we want to blend into the pavement. <laughs> Figure that one out. And we did. <laughs> Autistic kids see the world a little bit differently. Yeah. Yeah. Sipchinski and Adams. Well, we've already seen Adams and Mark is getting loose again for the third time. And there's the change up. Good one. 
Reader's one out of three with that triple. So he's hitting all three games this weekend. He will be happy to get back in action at home. Well, I look at his swing, and it is so much shorter than it has been in years past. He worked on it last year. I mean, it, if you want to go back before the Tommy John surgery, he was off to a great start. And one of the reasons is over the course of his career, natural right-handed hitter, Hits most of his home runs left handed for more at bats. 248 left handed, 280 right handed. So higher average, I mean, more home runs per at bat hitting the other way. But the swing is shorter. And it's just easier to get the bat through the zone on a level plane. And it's easier to hit. Hands are a little bit lower. Doesn't mean you're going to get hits. It just makes it easier when you get pitches hit. Pretty good slider right there. A good off speed pitch gets yeah. him. Third strikeout for Webb. They sit away, and for some reason, and I don't know if it's the fact that Ryan Webb is so big and he hides the ball well, but he struck out uh, Flaherty on a high pitch, and then uh, the same with Matt Wieters. He'd like to have it down in the zone, but he gets away with it. So Webb will leave. Chris Davis coming up. We'll see Sepchinski when we come back. May 17th, the Indians, the fewest, just two games in that span. Blue Jays three, and then the Cubs, Pirates, and Cardinals four. And we bring this to you because the Orioles have nine hits, so that streak on the verge of being broken. Our chief inside the numbers, and here is Mark. Yeah, well, Mark uh, Zepsinski, and uh, we saw him up in Toronto. He's done a nice job for him. He's one of those guys that kind of has reverse splits. I mean, he does get lefties out, right? He do hit him well. And they have a lot of the guys that. If you're right handed, they get the lefties out better than the right handers, so it's a little bit strange. But uh, you bring them in against left handers, and that's pretty much the case here with uh, Chris Davis coming to the plate. And they're only hitting 239 with a home run, and then righties at, at th over 300 to 308. Now here's Chris Davis, it's down and away. Zepchinski came over from the Cardinals, trade deadline 2013. And he has found a home here. He's from California. And then 2 and 0 to Chris. You can't ever have a vanity plate with that name spelled on the back of your car. It's too many letters. Too many letters. Yeah. What do you get? Six, eight. It's Something 11 like letters in his last name. Right. Yep, 11. Davis, by the way, is two for five against them in their prior meetings. There's a strike. You think that's why they want to not having the names on the back of their uniform? <laughs> Maybe so. Because of Mark. Save some money. Salto Lamacchia, his name went up really from under one armpit all the way around. Oriol saw Zepchinski as a young pitcher with the Blue Jays. It could be two. Oh, it's botched. 
That's Chisinau. Nobody's covering third base, and Jones is going to take advantage of it. Outstanding base running there by Adam Jones. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I mean, it's amazing how Buck Showalter says, well, you know, when you have shifts on, sometimes you just don't know who's going to cover what bases. Ideally, you'd like to have your pitcher cover third, but even if you tell them, and they usually do, at least the Orioles do, you're trained to go to the other side. So you kind of break to the other side, and as it turns out, uh, Adam heads up base running. And again, Chisenhall, boy, having one of those afternoons, it, not an easy play because of the hop, but it, it, it's almost like instead of getting one, wanted to try to turn two and doesn't get anybody. So Zepchinski leaves, pitching change in Cleveland in the seventh. It's, uh, you know, real hard throwing righty with a hard slider to go with it. And uh, he will come in with runners at first to third with the Orioles trail with a five to one lead. Fourth time he's been up and down. One of those guys that has options. So again, if you're going to make adjustments, roster, bullpen, he'll be the guy. Lefties haven't gotten a hit. Righties aren't hitting him very well. I mean, real good arm. And, uh, you know, one of these guys that came up through their minor leagues uh, as a starter and then. The right shoulder had a lame rib surgery and still able to throw 97-98. Yeah, following the surgery, they made the switch. So here's Delman, first and third, one down. Very alert base running by Adam Jones there, knowing the situation. Well, Buck was talking about it. He said, you know, that's it, it, it's so difficult sometimes with all the shifts and whatever to to go through all the possibilities or scenarios of, of who's going to cover and whatever. That's exactly what he was talking about it today. You can tell a, a pitcher to do there, but very few can get over there. And, and he was talking about actually telling them before the play may happen because you're so ingrained to go the other way. He said, really, the play is the catcher is supposed to cover third. And it had it's a big play in this case because there's only one out. Right. It wouldn't really matter as much with two outs unless you get a wild pitch. So now you can get a fly ball, and you know, Delman Young's number one is going to try to make contact on 97 and then try to put the ball in play somewhere in the air. And then you could possibly get your sixth run. And Chisenhall, in his haste to attempt to get two, got none. It wasn't an easy hop, but I think that was probably because he was thinking maybe two. Wow. See, this is why. <laughs> 98. Yeah, when you talk to almost any scout, but Dom Cheedy, the Orioles bullpen coach, said, uh, you know, the uh, the fly ball is a relief pitcher's enemy. And when you can bring guys out of your bullpen, they can strike people out or sinker ballers, they can throw the ground ball. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, you look at that, 97. So there's a good fastball hitter. You know, he's sitting on the fastball because of the velocity, 97, 98, and 98, and here, 97. Right over the top. So a big strikeout for the Indians. So two down now. Runners hold at first and third. Jimmy Paredes, who's had three good at-bats today. 
Fly ball to center field. Single to right field, scored a run. He got the rally going in the fourth inning. And then a sharp ground ball out. He hit it right at Chisholm Hall at third. Yeah, well, this this will be a test. He is throwing better this afternoon than he did on Friday night, velocity-wise. Goes with a five-to-one lead here in the seventh. Line drive and another base hit for Jimmy Paredes. Adam Jones will score, heading to third as Davis and Jimmy with a two-hit afternoon. Looks like he's got that stroke back, and it's six to one O's, and the error does cost the Indians. Yeah, he just turned around 99. It's about getting good pitches to hit and then doing something with it. This is a fast ball. It's not really anywhere but in the middle of the plate, and boy, he's all over it. He is a real good fastball hitter. So Paredes with a two hit game. Well, you'll really love to see this if you're an Oreo fan because what's happening is that they're about as hot as anybody hitting close to 400. The league adjusted. He didn't, or at least it took him a while. And now all of a sudden, he's trending in the right direction. And that's what you're looking for. Well, he was two for 32 over his last nine games. Today, he is two for four. JJ Hardy now. And his first multi hit game since May the 27th. It was the double header day where his slump began. He went one for eight in the double header against the White Sox. But Paredes has that stroke back today. Up and in 2 0 on JJ. Hardy singled in the rally in the fourth. You know, Jim, and here, here's the other positive about this game for the Orioles. They have six runs. Five of the six runs have been driven in with two men down. The only run that wasn't was when Weeters tripled, and then Chris Davis hit him in with a sack fly, got him in from third. Weeters had that leadoff triple. And there is a walk. So that'll load the bases with two down. Well, they've done the things that they do well. They've hit a home run. That was Adam Jones to give them the one nothing lead. They're one of the best runner in scoring position numbers, whether it's two outs or less today. It was, you know, the infield hit by Machado and then a great at bat by Travis Snyder. You know, one handed serve into center field on a good two strike pitch and made it four to nothing. And then right here, you get Paredes turning around 99 mile per hour fastball to, to add the sixth run. Ryan Flaherty swings through it 0 and 1. Yeah, if you have a long swing against this kid at 98 99, it's another thing that, you know, you talked about Ryan Flaherty moving in because of injury, scope still trying to get the knee well down in Sarasota. He's worked hard to shorten his swing. Hands in a different position. But, but again, uh, even, this is a good test. So nothing at two on Flaherty. The Orioles with the run in here have scored in four of their seven at bats today. Outside doesn't chase. This is the First time the Orioles have scored six runs since the second game in that White Sox doubleheader. They won that game six to three. And Flaherty down on strikes to end it. But the Orioles do get a run. They strand three. Seventh inning stretch in Cleveland. Chris Davis and the Orioles with a six to one lead.
Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. See Bruce Springsteen being featured there at the hall at the moment. And the Orioles travel party had an opportunity to go, and they did so. There's Bud Norris and Darren O'Day. This was on Friday morning as they checked out some of the exhibits. Guitars used in concerts by some of the biggest rock stars. Richie Bansell's joined in as well. So inside the vault, the travel party, they're in there. They're in the vault there. They got to see uh, the drummer for Kiss, Peter Chris, his green platform boots that were worn during the Dynasty Tour, and his original makeup kit, including the shower cap that he used to hold his hair back while they were putting on all that Kiss makeup. Of course, this year, one of your big fans, Joan Jett, was inducted into the Hall of Fame. And in that room, there's the leather jacket that she wore. I love rock and roll and bad reputation in the music videos, which I believe you produced. No, no. The only thing I produced was a no-hitter when she was at the ballpark. And, uh, of course, she was from Silver Spring, right. Maryland, and big Oriole fan. And I read an article where, and I've met her a number of times. Actually, she invited me to see, uh, she was with Sting uh, when I was in spring training. She was at a B game I was pitching down Miami Stadium. I saw her in the stands. I said, what are you doing here? I'm with Sting. Why don't you come? Brought my daughters. Wow. It was very nice. Backstage passes. But she's a huge Oriole fan, and still to this day. Now, here's another. I, I would have liked to have seen this. Aerosmith's, the stage microphone stand draped with the scarves and the mirrors so Steven Tyler can use it for dramatic effects when illuminated by the spotlight. I'm a big Aerosmith fan. That, that would have been something to see. Steven they, Tyler. They also saw Michael Jackson's glove that he wore during the performances of Billie Jean. Jimi Hendrix's personal hand drawings. He was an artist as well as an artist. And the big Joan Jet exhibit. Mm. So a nice day over there the other day. Very much so. It's like going down into the vaults at the Hall of Fame where you get to, uh, you know, see Ty Cla got, uh, Cobb's gloves. you you got to put on white gloves I, I to do it. I did it once, yeah. Babe Ruth's yeah. overcoat. Hannes yeah. Wagner's bat that looks yeah, like yeah. it was a tree that <laughs> they just gave him a handle. Oh, well, baseball, music. My, my favorite thing that I saw there, uh, the, the time we had the opportunity was Jackie Robinson's home Dodger uniform from his rookie year. The, the Dodger white. It seemed to be whiter than any other team's white. And the uh, the blue letter or the red numbers and the blue letters for Dodgers. Just a, a, a great. Anytime you see anything of Jackie in baseball, yeah. it's, so, it's so important. Well, it's so you historical. Know, I met uh, Don uh, Zimmer Jr. down in, uh, in Tampa when we opened this year. And, of course, his dad played with Jackie Robinson, but he said when he used to go to Dodger Town, he used to walk back to the, the, the dormitories and all that with Jackie Robinson. And wow. I can't just can't imagine what that was like. And never had a chance, even both of us ended up in the Hall of Fame, to ever meet him. But what a player. I mean, what a person. Even more well, so. That's, that's yeah. the, the most important part. Three and two on Bourne leading off here in the seventh. And Chaz Rowe gets him. Yeah, see, I mean, that, that is a fastball with unbelievable movement in the strike zone. And it's just that two, a one finger sinker. You, you think it's going to be in the middle of the play if you're Michael Bourne and it just runs away from your bad head. Yeah, one thing about Michael Bourne, and this could change when the Indians come to Baltimore, and, and you just hope it lasts, is that he's not tracking the ball very well. Just not be able to. You look at, try to hit the back of the ball, and he's pulling his head, and the Orioles taking advantage of it. Slider a little high to Mike Avilas. And it was popped up to short and grounded out to short. It almost acts like a changeup, but it has fastball velocity. It moves that much. What a pickup. Chaz Rowe, he is off to a tremendous start since being called up. Hard hit ball towards the hole and a base hit. Wow, is this hit feel fast? It really is. Yeah, Mike uh, comes out of New York, and uh, I remember when he was playing with the Red Sox, he said, boy, it's tough. I, I want to do the best I can, and he had some good years for him. He said, but most of my family and friends are, are Yankee fans. Now I'm playing for the Sox. Well, Avilas was traded for a manager. <laughs> he was traded from Boston to Toronto when John Farrell became the Red Sox manager. So Chaz Rowe will leave. A lot of lefties coming up. We'll see T.J. McFarland when we come back.
Joseph will be signing autographs and meeting fans from 11 a.m. until noon. He'll be at the official Orioles team store in the York Galleria. Don't miss your chance to meet Caleb and browse all the latest official Orioles gear. That is this Thursday coming up June 11th, 11 until noon at the official Orioles team store in the York Galleria. For more information and a complete calendar of Orioles community events, just go online at OriolesReach.com. Yeah, so T.J. McFarland came in and pitched very well on Friday night. Uh, able to, uh, in the, the Tillman win an inning two thirds based on balls, a strikeout. So a sinking fastball, a four seamer on occasion, slider and change up to go with it. Uh, and uh, been up and down this year, and certainly capable of giving you some length. That's one of the reasons they like him in the bullpen. Uh, lefties and this is really what this is about righties you can see the right hander number it was 500 it was six for 12 so that's come down not a whole a lot of it bat but able to get lefties out facing Jason Kipnis and there's a base hit in the right field on the first pitch Vilas will stop at second you see they know he's going to throw or at least they can hit off the fastball and if he gets it down it may be a ground ball at somebody and if it's belt high all of a sudden because he's not a hard thrower. I mean, we're not talking 90, 91, 92 on occasion. So Kipnis is a smart hitter. You, you don't hit like he did 429 in the month of May if you, if you don't know what to look for or have a pretty way to anticipate. And it really doesn't matter if you're righty or lefty when he's hitting. And of course, uh, TJ came through the Indian system. So they. Know him somewhat, although he's only won 16 games, double A and triple A for him. Deep to left field, that ball may hook foul, and it Barely. is a foul ball. Well, you better, if you're going to be successful in your TJ McFarland, he knows this as well as I do, you better be down in the zone. And that's why they'll uh, most likely get somebody up behind him. This is a game you need to win, and the Orioles will do everything they can, and part of that is. If you get the responsibility to come in, uh, do what Chaz Rowe did, make some pitches. And it's down right where the glove is. You're going to miss, miss down. But, yeah, that's where you want to be. 0 oh, 2 on the foul ball. Tommy Hunter now getting loose. And then all of a sudden, that fastball that is down may sink. You may get a ground ball. You said the very fast infield. If it sits at somebody, maybe you get yourself a double play. One pitch out of the inning. Because they're right into the heart of their lineup. McFarlane ahead 0 and 2 in the dirt. Nice block by Weeders. And the other thing is that because of, I guess what, Cabral's still on the ball club. He, he pitched yesterday, but you don't know really what you're going to get. Buck Walter said, I'm, I have no problem pitching him, but with the Mattis. Uh, Suspension. You don't have that other lefty that you kind of know can get left handers out. So this is a pretty big inning. As they're trying to climb back into the game somehow. And then over below, good take by the league leader in walks, Santana. Yeah, we see him hit so much left handed, and like you said, came in with 43 walks, better than anybody else. He doesn't strike out a lot either, only 32 strikeouts. He's actually a little better hitter average wise from this side, but half of the at bats. He's 242 righty, 231 lefty coming in. A two and two from 0 and 2 on Santana. Popped up back this way. Yeah, they have a lot of guys with good on base percentages. I mean, it, 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 it kind of. Starts with Kipnis who leads it off. I mean, he's getting on base over 41% of the time coming into the game. And then right behind him, Santana, 38% of the time, almost 39. Murphy right behind him hitting over 300. Santana battling here, two and two the count. Outside, ball three. This guy's not going to chase. Well, that's the problem. Uh, ideally, if you're TJ McFarland, you want him to chase a ball out of the zone because you got ahead, but he gets back into the count. Now, you look at the scoreboard. Buck Walder, any of us, any play the game, you pitch to the scoreboard, you have to throw him a strike here. You cannot walk him. And he, he did. did. And he threw him something that 
is really not a high percentage pitch. And this is exactly what the Indians want. They want base runners. They want where they, with one swing, can get back in the game, and they've created that. Well, walks have uh, certainly hurt the Orioles on the year. Walks that have scored the Orioles 47 of 173, 27.2%. Only the Yankees have a higher percentage of walks having scored, but the Orioles have walked more than the Yankees have. Yeah, and the minute they uh, they announce Ryan Rayburn, uh, Buck Showalter's right out of the bullpen. So McFarland comes in, does not do what he did on Friday night, and the Indians got something going here in the seventh. So McFarland will leave after facing two batters, both reach, a single by Kipnis, a walk by Santana, and Tommy Hunter makes his way in in the seventh. Fastball thing, 93 to 97. Uh, the pitch, uh, that's a breaking pitch between a curveball and a slider. So there are the numbers for Tommy. You see, he doesn't walk a whole lot of guys. 16 strikeouts in those 22 and a third innings. And then the uh, the left-handed average. That's why Buck Walter when Rayburn, who's a pretty dangerous hitter, but right-handed, is announced. He bring in Tommy Hunter. And those are the important numbers. A little bit higher. You'd probably want it down about another 10, 12 percent. That would be a really good number. And that's his job here: strand some runners as the Indians uh, try to get back in the game. Well, Tommy has three consecutive scoreless appearances, covering two and two-thirds innings. He last worked on Wednesday in Houston, when an inning and a third scoreless with two strikeouts there. So here's Rayburn pinch hitting. He's at 305. You see the runners. Avilas at third, Kipnis at second, and Santana at first. Line gloved and knocked out by Davis. Hopes to get an out. He gets it to Hunter for the out. A run does score, but they get an out. What a play by Chris Davis. I mean, that ball easily because it's scorched. Rayburn with a great at bat as far as uh, taking it where his pitch. But that had uh, base hit all over it. They'll get a run. But this easily could have been by him. And then a nice play, Tommy Hunter, for a big guy, very, very athletic, and able to catch it, find the base, and you're looking for outs here. Heads up to get over there. And they're looking for base runners because if he gets on, tying run, home run power would have come to the plate. So it is six to two. That run will be charged to Chaz Rowe, so the first allowed by Rowe since joining the Orioles. And Moss pops it foul. On the play, moving to third, Kipnis to second, Santana. Moss drove in the Indians' first run with a double in the fourth. Yeah, Brandon Moss uh, in playing for Oakland. Uh, well, played for the Red Sox early on, as you mentioned, but uh, then Oakland only won at bat 0 for 1. And Murphy had been 0 for 4. So 
Well, David Murphy lifted for Rayburn, who did get a run in. Might have been worse if that ball got by Davis. Uh, good breaking ball. You have to hit off his uh, his fastball because he has such good velocity. He came up with a two seamer, the the cutter, a thing of the past. There's a slider. That's a perfect position right on the inside corner. And he gets Moss. What a job by Tommy Hunter. Comes on and he inherits the bases loaded. Just one score. We're through seven in the Orioles with a six to two lead. The 2015 All-Star Game, several O's are in the running for starting spots. You can vote now for Adam Jones, Manny Machado, and any or all of the rest of your favorite birds. Let's go down line at Orioles.com slash vote orange, and you could earn ticket discounts plus the chance to win an autographed All-Star Game jersey. You can vote up to 35 times with each valid email address. So keep voting orange and get your birds into the starting lineup. Visit Orioles.com slash vote orange today. Manny Machado will lead off as Austin Adams stays on. Snyder and Jones will follow. Top of the lineup here in the eighth. Adams gets ahead with a breaking ball. Yeah, the first one he's thrown. You're looking 99 and mm -hmm. you get that. Well, that's uh, Tommy Hunter's last pitch was 99. So maybe the Raider gun. Tommy can throw. Hit 100 in Boston a couple years ago. Well, this is the way you would like the pitch. Manny, better fastball hitter. They put down slider. You throw it. You throw it for a strike. Execute your pitches. And there is Tommy Hunter. Big out. Oh, fabulous uh, job. Well, that and the fact Chris Davis flagged that rocket down, and there's 98 after you established the breaking ball. That's that's pitching. You know, he threw two sliders that were really good. And then this. Not only that, I mean, late life, up and in. 98 there you have to hit to try to hit the ball two feet out in front of the plate to hit the ball in the inside corner almost virtually impossible and if you do you probably have to go in and get a new bat very hard to get the good wood of the bat to that pitch well Adams has already struck out three since he came on last inning and Travis Snyder takes a fastball high and now there are those occasional guys like the king of swing Terry Crowley that if you look at the Zach McAllister, Allister. we saw him on Friday. The you know Crow would have to come sit around and then try to hit Gossage at 98, and then the swing would get shorter. Told me when he first started, and of course I knew him. He said he could always see the bat head over his shoulder, and then in, as he became one of the better pinch hitters, he said he couldn't see it anymore. Hands had to get a little bit lower, able to get the bat head to the ball, which is hitting. Snyder did a great job of that. His second time up. One of the big hits, the uh, the two out base hit mm -hmm. yeah. on a two, and, and it was a good pitch by Carlos Carrasco. Threw him a great change up, down and away, and he hit it. I'm in the left center where Bourne caught it, the center fielder. 
And that made it four to nothing at the time. One and two on Snyder, who was one for four with that big hit Jim just talked about. It was in the three run rally in the fourth. And he's down on strikes. So four K's in an inning and a third. Well, you got to like your bullpen, man. They do lead the American League in strikeouts, and you're seeing why. Carrasco and we didn't even see Bauer, or we didn't see Corey Kluber last year's Cy Young Award winner. But they got some power arms in the pen. Well, McAllister threw 97 98 the other evening. Got in trouble when he hung a breaking ball the next inning, but uh, they have some arms. Adam Jones, two outs, nobody on. Fastballs upstairs. Adam with a two hit game. He homered in the first to give the Orioles a lead, a 1 0 lead. Then he singled in the seventh to get a rally going and came around the score. 18 multi hit games now for Adam. And he is 10 for his last 20. Well, home run the left, soft single to right. Yesterday started the game off with what a uh, double up the gap in right center. Down in Houston, three hits the last day, two of them up the middle, game winning home run to left. So he's pretty much taken what uh, you're giving him. And right there, tries to hit us. Don't duck. Well, I'm trying to look at the monitor, <laughs> but also see if a ball is coming at us. <laughs> Got to do that, Jim. Do you ever do a game in the old Tiger Stadium? Oh, I oh. loved it. Yeah, but the basket hanging. I mean, you're in a basket literally hanging yeah. over home plate. I, I used to bring my glove. You needed it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that booth was so close. You could actually hear the dialogue between the catchers and the umpires when the catchers weren't getting the calls they wanted. Yeah, I did a game with Howard Cosell there, and one of my biggest regrets in life was that I flagged down a ball that was about to hit him in the chest. I did it. I saved him. You saved him. Hey, young man, you've saved my life. Adam, <laughs> defensive swing, Santana. And crossing over in the foul territory makes the catch. And a three up, three down inning for Adams. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth. The Orioles with a four run lead. Four run lead, so he'll take over for Travis Snyder, who had a one for five game, but it was a big one. It drove in two runs in the three run fourth inning rally. Tommy Hunter stays on, and the Orioles will have the bullpen active behind him. So Tommy came on in the bottom of the seven. He inherited the bases loaded one out. Got Rayburn on a smash to first on a nice pick by Davis who knocked it down with his glove and then flipped to Tommy for the out at first. The run did score, but then he struck out Brandon Moss. Yeah, huge out there. So as we said, big game to win. We saw Zach Britton uh, 
get a uh, five out save and uh, on this road trip. So they'll do what it takes off day tomorrow. Breaking ball for a strike to Nick Swisher. Chisenhall and Gomes will follow. This ball hit deep to right field towards the pole. That ball is a chance if it's fair, and it is foul. Well, that ball kept fading, unfortunately, so for Tommy Hunter. Yeah, we had the Santana home run uh, that went foul off of uh, TJ McFarland, and then I got to be a little bit happy that it may be a little more bat speed from Nick Swisher, who has really been playing that much. And then with only 12 at bats in the month of June, and we're all not that far into the month, but they got a lot of guys. Tough for Terry Francona to, to get them all in the lineup and keep them sharp. So 0 and 2 on Swisher. Yeah. And wow. he did not go. He appealed immediately. Nice job there by Marvin Hudson, the umpire. He didn't. He didn't pick it up, so he asked for help. Yeah, we'll see how far the bat went. And uh, he swung at that ball. They're very, I tell you, I, that's one get, everybody talks about changes in the games. I think they're more liberal now. That's how that in my area, you're gone. That bat head well out in front of home plate. You don't have to break your wrist. It's how far the bat head travels. Right field playable for Delman Young. And he's got it for the out one away here in the eighth. And Swisher retired. Think about Tommy Hunter. He's not going to walk people. You're going to have to earn your free passes. And then just in case they hit him a little bit, you got your O'Day and and Britton getting loose. Lonnie Chisenhall hitless today, 0 for 3. He is 0 for his last 13. Hard hit ball towards the middle, and the, there goes the over. Well, we talked about the fact that uh, when they got a little bit to Bud Norris in the fourth inning, he was able to strike out Chisenhall. He's an inside half hitter, and if you get the ball there, and that's why fastball command is so important before he becomes a tough out. You got to go way in or just sit on the outside corner. And with a couple of exceptions, the reason he is now one for 14 is they've been able to do that. John Gomes singled his first at bat, but Norris then struck him out in a huge spot in the fourth. And then he flied out to right in the sixth against Chaz Rowe. Tommy gets ahead on one. Side fastball. Tommy, the fourth Oriole pitcher, Bud Norris started five and a third one run. Chaz Rowe, one and a third one run. McFarland faced two batters, did not get an out. Now Tommy pulls the weak ground ball on the breaking ball down the line. And the bleachers in deep left center field trying to get the crowd into it. Warm day here today, and with the Orioles leading the whole game, some of the fans have left. Yeah, and then we've had pass balls and we've had wild pitches, and they have a couple of errors, but there he is. there's not anybody that plays for Buck Showalter that assumes that you're going to win this game unless you get get the outs. Oh, what a pitch. He strikes out Gomes for the second out. Now you kind of react to the way a hitter swings and sometimes you have to be the greatest slider because this one stays up, but it fools them. And we saw Ryan Webb that to, to the Orioles. We saw Chaz Rowe with some pretty good sliders today, so. And now you got to think that at some point Bourne's going to try to bunt his way on because he hadn't been swinging well. 
And Manny creeps in at third base to take the bunt away. Hits it to right, but right at Delman Young retreats a couple of steps and he has it for the out. So the one out single doesn't hurt. And Tommy Hunter works out of it. We're through eight. O's come to bat in the ninth, leading six to two. on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. A lovely day in Cleveland on this getaway day and the Orioles three outs away from winning a series and getting two out of three and here is Zach McAllister Jim on the pitch tonight. Yeah pitch on Friday night hard thrower a former starters got a curveball slider fastball changeup it was in the upper 90s. Uh, the Orioles did get him the second inning. So last year started early, relieved late, did a very good job of it, and got one start, his first start at, at, at home, and uh, did not pitch well against the Tigers. So in the bullpen, and there's the numbers we talked about the lefties, one of those reverse splits where righties hit him better than lefties. And as you can see, a fly ball pitcher, but hard thrower. The Orioles know all about him. His job it may seem menial when you come into the ninth inning, just keep it where it is. Right. Four run deficit for the Indians. The Orioles would love to add a run. And because the Indians, as Weeders takes a strike, have not gone in order since the sixth inning, they sent six men to the plate in the seventh and four in the eighth. The lineup will turn over again in the ninth. Avilas, Kipnis, and Santana are due up 9 1 and 2. Weeders to deep right field. That ball is back. That ball has a chance. And that ball is gone. Matt Weeders, welcome back. What a weekend for Matt. So Matt hits his first home run of the year. And the Orioles get a big insurance run and lead it 7 to 2. Oh, well, somebody asked him the other day, you know, are you worried about your hitting and uh, whatever? He said, I I'm not worried about that at all. Because he's had a lot of at bats. You know, all the extended spring games, it's not the same as here. I mean, it's not Zach McAllister. So, a home run, a triple. The, the swing is so much sounder. And that really began last year before the injury. Chris Davis trying to go the other way, fouls it back. I mean, he got a little, it looked like a little breaking ball, and it just speeds up the bat a little bit. Watch where the bat head is. I mean, that's really what hitting's all about. Uh, what, what did Pete Rose say? Can you square up the ball? Of course, Pete did it more often than anybody with over 4,300 hits. So the Orioles with seven on the board, the most runs they've scored in a game since May 22nd when they scored eight, and that one went out 98 miles an hour. This ball's hit well the left center field towards the scoreboard. And it is off the wall and in play. Chris is thinking too. He's got a hustle. Here's the throw coming in. He slides in safely. So yeah, so yeah, you now you got Jones, now you have Weeders, now you have Davis. And that is what Matt Weeders brings to the lineup. And all of a sudden, uh, maybe the uh, the offense that has been struggling up just up and away flicks it that way. It, 
there's the power that we talk about with Chris Davis when he gets balls out over the plate. So Chris with a base hit. He also has an RBI with a sack fly. That gets Delman Young up. Runner at second and nobody down. And a little low. Good take. Yeah, if Buck wins today, what he tied Frank Seeley, as that was the name of the Hall of Fame manager, the Frank Seeley, Seeley, uh, S E L E E, who managed uh, what the Boston Bean Eaters, oh. and uh, won four out of five pennants, two World Series. They said, uh, I'm going to call him. Seeley. Okay. Frank Seeley. They said he was a master of putting teams together. He could recognize players in their street clothes. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Gomes out to talk to uh, McAllister. Home run. Double behind Delman Young. Two and one for Delman. And fouls it straight back this way. You know, it's funny when a team is struggling and the Orioles at 25 and 30, certainly not where they want to be record wise. Are they going to make roster changes? They're going to sign other players before the trading deadline? They just, they did. They got Weeders back. It's like making a trade. A trade. <laughs> Well, Frank Salee managed from 1890 to 1905. And they say he played at an era where he actually, they said one of the things he did, um, he was a, when he played, managed the Boston Bean Eaters, they were the first team to win 100 games. And they said he taught his players because it was pretty rough and tough. He said he wanted his players to play civilized. As long as you win 100 games. <laughs> right. When Frank C. Lee and Buck neither played in the big leagues as a player. But C. Lee's in the Hall of Fame, and Buck, I'm sure, will have a strong consideration for that later on in his career. And guess who the what his infield was in one of those years? Tinker to Evers, Evers to Chance. Yeah. How about that? They all played for him. Well, of course, because he recognized talent. There you go. They were... Showed up in their street clothes. He goes. <laughs> he said, "Joe Tinker, I want you to go play shortstop." There's there's uh, a base at the center field. No, no. Avilas gets back on it, and Davis, <laughs> outstanding read there on that. Yeah, you know we're we're not. I mean, this is actually a pretty good booth. We're not that high, but I I thought that was a base hit all over. We just got up to bat. I guess enough. Sounded everything sounds good in this ballpark, especially for the Orioles with seven runs on the board. But Mike Avilas a nice play to get it. I'm thinking about backhanding it, but better sense to do that. So Davis holds it second. Here's Jimmy Paredes. Jimmy turned around on a 99 mile an hour fastball from Adams in the seventh to drive in a run. Takes a strike there. A 2 4 4 for Jimmy. After coming into this game, just two for his last 32. Yeah, when I was talking to him on Friday, I said, you know, it, it's like you have to really go from a bat to a bat, from inning to inning, pitching, hitting, whatever. I mean, if you're a shortstop, you caught the one ball. Okay, how do I catch the next one? When you're hitting 370, 380, you think you can hit everything. And then all of a sudden, the strike zone really becomes the size of Ohio or Maryland or wherever you're playing because you, 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 you're hitting everything because you're getting good pitches to hit. Pop foul out of play. Well, the RBI single in the seventh. It snapped a 47 at bat drought. He got 47 straight at bats without an RBI. Yet he's came into the game 15 for 30 with runners in scoring position. His last RBI prior to today was May the 24th, the final game the Sunday in Miami. Yeah, there's a good just stay alive. Nice breaking ball from McAllister.
Well, with a day off tomorrow, Terry Francona hasn't been shy going to his bullpen. The only two that have not been in the game, Cody Allen and Brian Shaw. And then Paredes down on strikes. Sounded like a foul tip held yeah. by Gomes and two down. Yeah, good fastball this time, able to, to get the two strikes and pitch out of the zone. Right up the ladder. Good late life. Darren O'Day getting loose again. Now it's not a safe situation. Even more so. Because with a five run lead. More difficult for the Indians to get the time run on deck. So it looks like O'Day will come on and work the ninth. Yeah, you just got to kind of decide who needs to work more. If it's Darren, that will be the decision. Zach worked Thursday and Friday. Picked up saves. O'Day hasn't worked since Thursday, so this would be his first appearance in this series if he comes on. Strike one to Hardy. He's one for three plus a walk. Now, if you throw 98, what's 91? A changeup? There was a slider, a backup slider. Usually you make a face when you hang it. He just took the ball because he swung through it. High pop, shallow right, kip this out, charging in Moss. Moss will get there, and he has it for the out. But the Orioles add a run. Matt Wieters activated for Friday night. He's hitting all three games. Now he has his first home run. He owes three outs away from a win. Well, Tom and Rick, thanks so much. In those home runs, the Orioles' 18th multi-home run game of the of the season, and it's the first time in the early on in June here that they've had two home runs in a game. And here's Darren O'Day to try to close it out. Yeah, and you know, Darren, he's going to get his work as you mentioned. Hasn't pitched since uh, what Thursday, Thursday, where he pitched very well against Houston. Got himself in and out of trouble. Uh, he doesn't walk anybody. He knows how important it is to get outs. Doesn't like to give up runs. Look at that old 89 ERA. Righties 121. Lefties a little bit higher, uh, but he usually figures out a way to get him out. And so he'll come in. Uh, his whole mission: let's get three outs and let's go get our uh, a little bit of food, pack up the bags. He can get you out so many different ways. I mean, this is a riding fastball. Carter swings through it. There's another one right there, and then he got the backup slider, and he's got the one that he can pitch back door, throw the one at your hip. A lot of ways to get you out. So seven consecutive scoreless appearances. He'll go to work on Mike Avilas, then Kipnis and Santana, nine one and two, and the Orioles five runs ahead. Breaking ball foul back. Avilas on the day is one out of three. He singled in the seventh. It was a one out single against Chaz Rowe and eventually came around the score on the ball hit by Rayburn. 
Orioles used three different pitchers to get through that seventh inning. But the Indians managed only one run. Bouncer glove by O'Day. Halfway to first to Davis and one away. Uh, you, you know, we always, uh, I learned this early on in my career that you do become a defender once you release the ball right about here. And uh, every day, what do they do? They come out, throw passes, they're doing something athletically uh, inclined to, to make you a little bit more cat like when you release the ball and become a fielder. Jason Kipnis, who has another multi hit game. Yeah, two strikeouts, and then he said, I'm tired of this. Double single. He's hitting five in a row now. He is six for his last 17. Began today second in the league in batting and second in base hits. So if he was 398 at home with four home runs of his five, and he's two for four, that he might be over 400 here in Cleveland. You know, all you got to do is look at the, the way he has sprayed the ball around the field. I looked yesterday, he had like 22 hits to the left. Actually, 20 to the left, 33 up the middle, and 21 to right. Now, that's moving around the ballpark. Can't reach that one, and it's one and two. I mean, he's got a good number. 22. Get it? Let's just follow me. I know. <laughs> You're excited. Orioles are ahead. Need two more outs. Now, uh, did he uh, ask for that no, number in honor of No, no, he didn't. No, he's a hitter. Hitters don't like 22. Well, he does. I know. He's got 76 hits. It's got it's June 7th. 51 in May. I asked him, what's your encore going to be for that? And that's what he told me. It's hard hitting 333. i got to get a hit once every three times up. And he's been doing that. Yeah, waited on that. And so the Orioles saw the bats come alive today. They've been waiting for that. Will it carry over? We'll see when we get home. Two and two on Kipnis. Just outside. Yeah, well, well. You never really know that, and the one thing when you play this game and you play 162 games and you're 25 and 30, and you're pit, you, you know who's pitching. And Carrasco was on a roll, seven wins. It's about today, and they've done a great job playing as a team today in all facets of the game. Three two is fouled back. I mean, you look up at the scoreboard, the Indians made two errors, and they've led to some runs. You know, the Orioles have hit the home runs. But Norris, when he got in a little bit of trouble, able to get out of it. Carrasco wasn't. And now you need two more outs to put the lid on the pot. Ninth pitch is hit towards left center field. Adam Jones on the run, and it's past him for a base hit. So Kipnis has a third hit of the day. And two of them the same way. I mean, he just drills it. You know, you think you can run him down, but and, and he takes a great angle of the ball, and that's that's what the Gold Glovers do. But the ball just hit too hard. So an eight pitch at bat, and Kipnis finally wins. I mean, what, anyway, when you get a break a ball out over the plate, you can just let it travel a little bit farther, and then the strength factor, I mean, the, the the plane of the bat, it, with the angle. Boy, he stayed right behind that ball, and that's back to back doubles up the gap. And, that get your closer back up. So here is Carlos Santana, who is hitless on the day. He has drawn a walk, which is not a shocker for him. Leads the league in walks, and that one's ripped foul. Well, this has been a big day for a lot of the players in this game. Of course, uh, Travis Snyder, a two-run single. Jimmy Paredes, this is a two-hit game. Bud Norris returned five solid innings. But let's not forget our Maryland lottery contestant of the game, John Townsend, the third of Essex. Adam Jones homered, Matt Wieters homer, so he picked up another thousand dollars on those two home runs. So, so did John. Was big happy day all the, around. Yeah, happy the way the wind was blowing today. Breaking ball low, and then the starter. Not that all home runs were hit off him, but he didn't give up home runs. So John, congratulations. That's right. He's buying dinner tonight. 
one and one on Santana. There have been a lot of long at bats in this game. There's a breaking ball for a strike. Well, after their what eight walks yesterday, their their on base percentage went up to 330, and uh, they were fourth on on base percentage in the American League anyway. So that's what they do. And yeah, when they could get the uh, the runner, and I talked about this yesterday, the runner in scoring position number up at 231, which is exceptionally low. And there's a strikeout. You know, a little bit in, a little bit, and then just out of the zone. Darren O'Day does it. It's deceptive windup. Many guys in baseball throw from that arm angle. And you know, I was asking him after the Houston game where he came in and get the the hold, and then Britton got the save. What he had the bases loaded. He, he got behind people. He threw three two breaking ball. I said, "How do you do that?" He goes, "You just have to have confidence. You, you know, you got to feel like you can make that pitch." And, some guys can make it and some can and that's really separates the Darren O'Days. Just think about how how we got Chris Davis, Tommy Hunter, and then O'Day. He had to hurt his hip. And the Rangers needed Koji O'Hara. We got Tommy Davis. We get Chris Davis. Buck Schollotter smart enough because he had Darren O'Day. Bring him back. And he's pitched great for the Orioles. Check swing. Did not go. There hasn't been one check swing call to strike today. <laughs> and it didn't matter. So far. Well, no, just, just noting reporting that, the facts. Just noting that. <laughs> this is Rayburn's second at bat. He drove in a run. A great play by Chris Davis to save a couple more runs. A little yeah. late on the swing and he misses. Well, he did exactly what he was supposed to when somebody when we saw Tommy Hunter throw to 99 when you get a fastball guy out there you look for it and he hit a bullet destined into right field and Chris Davis was able to get it in the webbing his glove kept keep it in they scored a run but we got the Orioles got the out and that big difference at the time. One and two. And again fouled off to stay alive the Indians. Been incredible in this series how they prolonged at bats with the foul balls. Yeah, a couple of a lifetime at bats, Ryan Rayburn off of Darren O'Day, 0 for 2. And the 1 2 is outside. Day won't give in, especially with this big lead. He's going to. Well, like he doesn't want to give up another run. But he got an 87 ERA. Runs are precious. <laughs> Seven straight scoreless for a day. And it's pulled foul. And for Darren, in his last 19 games, he's allowed three runs, but two of those are unearned. So one earned run in his last 19 games. That's an ERA in that stretch, 0 5 2. That is impressive. And the count holding 2 and 2 on Ryan Raber. Upstairs, ball three. Now Kipnis had a long at bat. And now Rayburn along at bat. He's about to see the eighth pitch from Darren O'Day. Rayburn has only seen O'Day twice prior, and he's 0 for 2. And there's a good chance if Rayburn gets on, uh, Buck Shoulder will bring Britton in to face Brandon Moss. Line drive and a base hit into left field. Routing third and eight to the plate is Kipnis. So Rayburn wins that battle, an eight pitch at bat, an RBI single, and it's a 7 3 game. Yeah, nice at bat. The Rayburn didn't start, and he's got two RBIs, and here comes Buck. So with the lefty Moss coming up, Britton was up twice, so he's loose. And Darren O'Day will leave after going two-thirds of an inning and allowing a run. Oh, it's Cabral coming in, not Zach Britton. So the lefty Cabral will come on to face Brandon Moss. One on, two out in the ninth.
Brawl, so it came in yesterday. You could see uh, a walk, then he got the ground ball. Double play, two uh, thirds of an inning. So pitching extremely well down at uh, Norfolk. Uh, up and down very briefly with the Yankees. So he's left handed. And uh, again, 21 in a two thirds scoreless innings, in the double A, and then most of those innings at triple A. Buck on the phone with Dom Cheedy. We saw Britton getting loose, and he's still getting loose. Yeah, he was up, and I just couldn't see Cabral, who's a big guy, and uh, he was getting loose. So now Swisher's spot is due next, but let's not forget they do have Michael Brantley on the bench. Well, they also have. I mean, the, the one thing and Brantley could hit everybody because he's one of the elite players in the league, and but Swisher is a switch hitter. So Cabral may be out there until you get the. Uh, Time run on deck. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Well, Buck Showalter said if we're going to, he's going to be on the roster. I'm going to use him. So it's uh, seven to three. You you need another out, and there. Uh, and then he pops up the first pitch. Yeah, they're back to yeah. The I mean, they're alive uh, in, until you get that 27th out. Well, if, if Moss gets on, it becomes a safe situation. So that's why Zach is still up. Because that would put the tying run on deck. Boy, has this been a grind out game? Well, that's what the Orioles do. And when you're struggling, you'll take a win any way you can. Weeders with a nice scoop. Yeah, the thing about Moss, uh, he hits more home runs against right handed pitching, but his average much, much higher 290 off of lefties. So they feel comfortable. Eight home runs of his 10 against right handed pitching, two against the left handers. And there's a good slider. So, fastball slider pitcher out of the Dominican Republic. It really doesn't matter where you're from, just throw a quality pitch down in the zone, make him chase. Everybody will come out and congratulate, and you can go home. That's what just he did, Moss plate. didn't go. Two and two on Moss. He's one for three with an RBI double. And it bounces it foul, of course. Prolonging the at bat. It'll be interesting to see when the uh, final box score of this game comes out how many pitches were thrown in this game combined by each side. And he got him, and the ball game is over. So Moss goes down on strikes, and the Orioles win the rubber game and get two out of three to close out the road trip. An uplifting win for the Birds after the frustration of yesterday when they lost a two to one game. Yeah, a type of game where you're hoping Bud Norris pitch well, pitching on short day rest, 57 pitches, and uh, the uh, the three, I guess the four innings up at, 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 at triple-A ball, and then he comes back. He pitches well, and he gives up one run in five innings. And when he won 15 games last year, he pitched well. The Orioles scored over five runs a game for him. So today, even more. And then it was a matter of the bullpen. A lot of clutch hits. So this is the way you envision winning ball games. You pitch well, you play great defense, you out-defense them. The Indian makes a couple of crucial errors. You get 12 hits. That doesn't happen against the Indians very often. And you outscore them by four. So the Orioles with 12 base hits, seven runs. Buck Showalter congratulating. So our game summary here is the Orioles get two out of three. 7 12 and 0 for the O's, 3 9 and 2 for the Indians. Bud Norris is first start. He came off the DL today in almost a month. Five quality innings, just one run on four hits. He got himself into two jams, got himself out of both jams. Orioles, five of the seven runs came in with two men down and Welcome back Matt Wieters. How about a weekend for Matt Wieters uh, as he hit in all three games and today wheels Wieters with a triple and then a home run.